outside hitter 6'6 junior from Virginia Beach, Virginia. Number three, Brad Rose at fire. And outside hitter 6'8 junior from Amsterdam, Netherlands. Number four, Stein Blocker, 6'6", six, six, Junior from Lindenhurst, Illinois. Number 11, Dalton Solbrey. Oh, oh. And Lee Barrow, 6'2", Senior from Honolulu. Number 14, Larry Tui. At middle blogger 610 sophomore from Clovis, California, number 15, Patrick Gasman. And opposite 69 sophomore from Sofia, Bulgaria, number 19, Rado Parabono. Six-foot junior from Moraga, California. Floor captain number one, Joe Morsley. The Hawaii staff video coordinator, Gabriela Bataltia. Volunteer assistant, Chad Giesman. Assistant coach, Joshua Walker. Associate coach, Milan Zarkovich. Head coach for your Rainbow Warriors, Charlie Wade. teams in the nation. The duo returned to the court to battle it out again in the final match of the regular season as Hawaii pays tribute to its two seniors in Larry Tui Tuiletta and Mamani Namahoy. It's senior night. It's the rematch between Long Beach State and Hawaii. Senior night here at the Stan Sheriff Center, so let's take a look at the Kaiser Permanente keys to the match. Coach? Well, for Long Beach State, it might be the X Factors. I think the big three will play well. They're all Americans, but how about, how about Amato and Molina? They're, they're libero from last night. Those two could be factors. Actually, Solbrig and Tuileta on the Hawaii side. And for Hawaii, they've just got to finish. Three chances to win the third set last night, four chances to win the fifth, and they could not finish. Maybe tonight, they will. Maybe tonight will be the night as T.J. DeFalco, the reigning national player of the year, will go back behind the service line. The junior out of Huntington Beach, California, team leader in aces with 43 on the year. So Hawaii last night falling in a three-hour, 13-minute marathon to the number one ranked 49ers. And we're underway in the first quarter. Put down by Dalton Sobre. Here are the Hawaii Bell MCU starting lineups. You see him at the bottom of your screen. How about this connection between Worsley and Solberg? It continues to be crisp and pure. Wow. Well, last night, Hawaii got off to a bit of a slow start. In fact, they got really hammered 25-16 in that opening set. And then they kind of got themselves back as Parapuna gets the kill on Kuninga in the back row. What a different start than last night, Scott. Last night, Hawaii was just in jail from the get-go and barely recovered. Well, we do know Hawaii wins tonight. They're the number two seed. They get a bye next week at the Big West Tournament. If they lose, they're the four seed. And getting the first point is a motto 
for Long Beach State. 49ers 24-0 on the year, 9-0 in the Big West. They are the reigning, or not reigning, but they are the Big West Conference champions and the number one seed. Hawaii checks in 17-7, and 5-4 in league play as Nick Amato, who was in on that final block in set number five, will float serve it over. Worsley in the middle, miss hit by Solbrig. That time, not the great connection like we saw in the first one. A rare error from Worsley to Solbrig. So I guess the question after last night's marathon is, who has the most left in their tank? <laughs> that's right, that's a great question. They go back to Solbrig. This time it works. And what Hawaii's doing right now, they're going to the middles early. That's going to give options to the outside. Well, the difference between last night and, and tonight is the last night they weren't passing well early, so they couldn't go to the middle. Tonight they've had three or four pretty good passes, allowing Worsley to work that middle. In fact, in that first set last night, Long Beach State led from start to finish. And Hoos goes down the line. He misses wide. And it's a 4-2 Hawaii advantage here in the opening stanza. Nice crowd on hand, white out. I think the weather might scare off a few fans, but if you decide not to come because of a little rain, you could miss out on another great evening of men's volleyball. Here comes Brett Rosenmeyer. Had an ace last night, but also had five service errors and has one right there. The last night really had the uh, final four atmosphere. No question about it. Two quality teams going toe to toe, 22-20 in the fifth. An amazing, epic match. Ensign with five aces a night ago. Rips that one to let a perfect pass in the middle. Blocks Solbrig, but there's Rosenmeyer. They go back side, right side, and off the block is Parfuma. Rado off to another good start. Last night, Rado are coming up with 20 kills on the night and 40 swings at 300. Nice, respectable number for him. Now that's five straight matches of 10 or more kills for Parapunov as Solberg, who had an ace a night ago, will serve for Hawaii. Good pass to Tuaninga out of the back row to Falco, and he is so deadly when he leaps from behind that three-meter line. If the Falco starts attacking from the back row a lot, I think Hawaii's got to serve him short, make him come up and pass that ball up by the three-meter line, which is gonna negate his chance to get a good approach. The Norwegian, Bjarne Hoos, serves it. Set left side. Here's Stein, chest save, giving Chase Ensing behind the end line. They'll have to be freed over. Here comes Hawaii, Tweedleta, Worsley to left side. Stein again! Yes! Hawaii looks so much more crisp offensively than they did in that first set last night. Well, it all started with Tweedleta taking the serve, the jump serve, with his hands. He's, He's got those big paws, and it's pretty amazing how he handles tough, fast serves. Parapunov, the Bulgarian, rips the serve. Twininga chases left side and pushed over and down by DeFalco. DJ a night ago, 22 kills, hit 259. He was very successful going down the line, whether it was a tip shot like that or whether it was ripping it down the line. I think Hawaii had a Take his line away and see what he's got cross court. Simone Anderson, Tuiletta up to Worsley, left side. Stein again blocked, but saving it. Parapunov, Worsley gets it back on the right side. Parapunov gets it over the triple block and down in the back row. Boy, Rattle's got it going on early, getting it high and hard, getting a good approach. Great back set from Worsley as well. Very precise, right on the money. Boy, forcing it to five last night. Going into last night's match, Long Beach State had only lost seven sets all year. And there's going to be an ace for Stein von Tilburg. There's mom and dad, Theo and Brigitte, coming all the way from Amsterdam to watch their son play tonight. That's number 11 for Stein. Boy, out to a three-point advantage here early in this opening set. Von Tilbury again, looks for Molina, twinning a back set right side. Ensing powers it off the block. Ensing a night ago, 16 kills hit 255. Both teams hit well below their average a night ago. I think you gotta credit both assistant coaches on either side 
for drawing up great scouting reports. They pretty much told their defenses where to stand all the time, and each team blocked and dug a lot of balls, hence the low hitting average. That may be an overpass. That'll end up being an ace, unable to handle the jump serve is Von Tilburg, so give to Aninga the ace, and for Josh, number 21 on the year, this is a very prolific serving team in Long Beach State. Had eight service aces last night. So seven serving eight to Aninga. The younger brother of former Rainbow Warrior Gus. Franks that one. Worsley quickly in the middle and putting it down is Gaston. Gaston got there up early, changed his route. He had to change his route because the ball was passed so far to the left side, but Patrick does a nice job of getting his feet to the ball and changing where he was going to have his attack, attack line. So Gasman will serve. Nice serve. To Aninga goes to get it on the left side. For whose cross court knocks it down. Actually, that was Ensing, excuse me, with the kill. Ensing showing that he can hit not just on the right side as most oppos do, or the D ball out of the right side. He can hit on the left as well. Actually, in the junior national team, he's played a lot of left side. So he's uh, he's very good there. This almost feels like a continuation from last night. Yeah, yeah they're sure. picking up right where they left off. Right? Exactly. Aren't they? Another quick set to Solberg and he delivers. Solberg already with three kills. He only averages like a couple of kills per set already. He's got three in this set. Yeah, just under two, 1.74 kills per set. Last night Sober. a career high with 12. Yep, he was very good last night. Twiningo on the right side. There's Ensign, and he gets the point. Ensign picks up his uh, third kill. We talked to Alan Knight before the, the match, and he said he thinks that his team is better when they're not Kyle Ensign, TJ DeFalco heavy offensively. He'd like to see the ball spread around a little more, I'm sure. He communicated that to uh, to Aninga. Well, that's kind of what they were last night. Solberg looking for another kill. Will he get it? No. Yes, he will. Kevin Cole, the official said it hits the terror flex before the spat slug it under it. Amato wants to challenge that. Not quite sure if Alan Knight will, and he will. Alan Knight picking up his 301st career victory last night in the five set win in his 15th year at Long Beach State, the 2012 U.S. Men's Olympic coach. As you take a look at the officials, Kevin Cole again up, Dixon Chun will be down, Sam Montalvo and Melinda Rusher are the lines people. Let me see whether or not the ball, let's see if we can see whether or not Tuaninga got his palm under the ball. Ooh, looks like the ball hits the floor first. I'm not sure about that one. I think that's going to be tough to overturn for sure, right? I think he might have. I think he might have gotten, you know, a couple fingers underneath. That's why he said, "Coach, you better challenge that." But I think most of the ball lands on the floor. And you're going to get your entire hand under there if you're going to get the call. Well, last night it was Wayne Lee who was the replay official, if you will, and tonight Dixon Chun taking a good long look at the monitor. I'm not sure. Yeah. I think you're right, though. I agree with you. I think the call will stay, which means we're probably wrong, right? <laughs> They're going to redo it. You see Charlie Wade a bit perplexed. It's early, but you want the calls to go your way, that's for sure. I think Alan Knight still loses his first of his three challenges, though. So Amato will float it over. Worsley backs it right side. Rosemont off the palm of Amato in the back row. Good to see Rosie getting involved early offensively. He would love nothing better than to turn his offensive game around as last night he hit negative. Just couldn't quite get it going. Five kills, six errors in negative 036. I don't think he got his first kill till like his 16th swing. Molina 
to Aninga in the middle. Dug up, pushed over by Solbrig. Joust the net, pushed over by Solbrig. And it'll be a point on her right. Back to one goal on to Aninga. The center was in the back row, and so when you jump up, you can't attack the ball, you can't block it. Left the floor, and so back row blocker infraction on Josh to Aninga. Point for Hawaii. No the question ball, about that. The ball's 50-50 up there. It means that either team can attack it. Denzing takes a bit off. Tuileta digs it. Harpunov will swing at it. And he hits it wide. He took a pretty good swing there. Just a little bit too much on it. Again, Long Beach State block up there. Very solid. I think Rada was really trying to avoid that block. That was asking a lot to hit that sharp of an angle. Well, last night we know during one of the timeouts they said take away his line, make him hit it cross court. Hansen rips that serve. Worsley gets it over on the left side for Von Tilbert. Dug up in the back row by DeFalco. Molina will throw it on the right side. Hansen just rolls it over. Three letter back to Rado off the double block. Saved by the beach. Out of the back row, DeFalco gets it down to his right. In transition, Long Beach State loves to go to DeFalco on that back row quick. And he's about as good a back row quick player as there is in the country. No doubt. So Ensing, the junior out of Valencia, California. 25 service aces on the year. The high toss and the rip. So we let a, the overpass and taking advantage of hitting the net as well as would have had to instead it's a net violation and a digit on the Hawaii side of the ledger. Pretty obvious call there. Joe did a nice job of just getting out of the way. <laughs> Smart move. Here's Brandon Rattray. He'll come in and serve for Hawaii. Rattray, 10 service aces on the year. Pops that one over and a bad bit too far. He hit that one pretty easy, and it went 62 miles an hour. Yeah, he took a little off that one, right? Yeah. <laughs> he normally hits up around 70. Here's Bjorn Hoos, the Norwegian. Pops that one over. Good pass up to Worsley. He goes back to Stein. Block, but there's Rosenmeyer. They go in the middle, punched over, diving save Molina. In the middle, flipped over, dug up by Rosenmeyer. They go left side again for Stein. Dug up Molina. Twininga chases on the left, trying to pull it off the block. It will be DeFalco, but Worsley dug it up, and they're going to have to redo because Kevin Cole, the up official, blew his whistle too early. He thought the ball was down, but Worsley was right there. Fans don't like it. Now look at that diving save by Molina. I know you really liked his effort last night. I love Tuaninga's set there as well. Tuaninga made a great job of turning sideways to the net. I think Kevin Cole didn't expect Worsley to be able to get to that, but he did. So we we'll redo it. Worsley under it. Set over. Dug up, punched in the air. Tuaninga will attack it. He's blocked by Gassman. Left side. And jumping through it early with the bubble. Tabaco was coming down as the ball was going off. There was just a miscommunication as to what kind of set was, what tempo of set was going to be out there. And I think that uh, TJ was expecting a really fast set to go out there, a hot, fast tempo. And uh, Tuaninga was, had a, I think, a, a second tempo set going out there to the left. Here's the freshman Gage Worsley out of Moraga. Had a chance to serve Hawaii's Aloha ball last night, but served it into the net. Gets that one over. Back set, right side, ending off the block. There's Worsley to his brother, to Stein, who stopped. Anderson to Ninga in on the first block by either team here in this opening set. Simone Anderson, what a catch for Alan Knight, kid out of Denmark. Been Big West Freshman of the Week seven times this year. Incredible. And you hear the crowd, Ethan Siegfried, the freshman out of Punahou, will come in and serve, and he had a, quite a night last night, didn't he? He really did. He's got four aces on the year. Now I think he's got seven, because he got three last night. He got three last night, that's correct. Rosenmeyer overpasses it, and diving save by Gage. Turned around, Joe hits it. 
Back set, right side, end sync. to this ball. What a save. Worsley gets the save. Hawaii gets the block. Look at this. One more time. Big Island Candies, the perfect place to find the perfect gift. Visit them at their flagship store in Hilo at Ala Moana Center or BigIslandCandies.com to see their amazing selection. Okay, take a look at the two seniors who will be honored at the end of this match, Tuiletta and Namahoy. But some work to be done first before that happens. There you see Larry Tui Tuiletta. All way up 15-13 here in set number one. You're saying during the break that these two teams now look like last night was kind of a warm-up even though it went five. Now they're both, they're loose and ready to go. The Falco cross court, and he just gets it inside the sideline. Well, like I said, Hawaii took his line, and just to see if he's got a cross court shot, and boy, does he ever. He can hit it really, really sharp when he wants to. Well, as close as it gets. Reninga serves it into the twine. Now we're going to get our first look at Austin Montaltia this weekend. He'll come in to serve the sophomore at Moanalua High School. Leads the team in service aces with 23. Austin flips it, tips the net, gets over a model, saves it. Over to DeFalco. DeFalco is so smart behind the three meter line a couple of feet and uses the block to his advantage. Austin did his job. He forced a pass that was way off the net, forcing Long Beach State to be out of system. They couldn't set the middle. All they could do was go to the pins and, well, when one of your pin hitters is TJ DeFalco, he'll always come up with something. Long Beach has nine kills so far, eight of them between DeFalco and Ensign. So not quite the game plan Alan Knight had hoped for. Serve rolled over, backs it for Stein, cross court, dug up, overpass. There's Twiletta to Worsley, back to Stein. Stein goes down the line, and we'll get a net violation called along the team. Would have gone out of bounds off the hands of Molina anyway. Molina was right there to pop up Stein, I'll tell you. That Jordan Molina, for a guy who hardly played at all last year, the year before he was at Long Beach City College, was MVP in the state tournament. And he's coming in uh, having just watched most of last year behind Andrew Sato. Worsley will free it over. Molina bumps it to Iletta. Here comes DeFalco on the bit. There's no stopping that one. It's really a tough set to block. He's going to worry about your middle attacker. That time, though, Ga Gasman stayed home. Our Solprig stayed home, did not commit on the middle blocker. So he was there to block TJ. He just wasn't in the right spot. Larry Richard, who we saw in last night's match, was serve, the junior out of Los Angeles. Those have four service aces on the year. But he serves it into the net. He was really good in set five last night. Sat around for two and a half hours watching the game. He finally gets his chance in the fifth set. The best thing he did, I think, for Long Beach State was he passed the ball really, really well. Well, Bjarn Boos apparently was cramping up, cramping up in that fifth set, and so Richard had to come in to relieve him. Did a good job. Hawaii up by two. Rosenmeyer gets to serve over to Ininga. There's the foul pull again. Hawaii will be calling for the net violation. Doesn't matter. And they're going to. The foul had three blockers up. Didn't make any difference. There he comes. Three blockers up. They're all late, though. Seven swings, seven kills for TJ DeFalco. Hawaii still leads, but only by a one. Ensign gets the serve over. Worsley over on the left side for Von Tilbert. Dug up overpass. There's Tweeletta. Back to Worsley. Back to Stein. Off the hands of the block. Cut off the pause of Simone Anderson. Good set for Joe Worsley that time. Held Simone Anderson just long enough where Simone was late getting out to the outside. Gave Stein a little opening. Yeah, good look at Dalton Solbrig. And his serve 
goes long. Always well, done a, a fairly good job in this first set of getting their serves in. Well, they just, I guess their third miss. Long Beach State hasn't missed but once. So Hoos, the lone senior in the starting lineup, serves it. Worsley in the middle. Gaspin. Gaspin with his second kill of the evening. Hawaii the first to reach 20. I think Ensing wasn't quite, quite ready for that one. Didn't expect that. That showed up in a hurry, didn't it? Yes, it did. Rado cranks that one. They go on the left side. Off the block, saved by Worsley. Off the hit by DeFalco. Left side set for Von Tilburg. There's Rosemeyer to cover. Back set far right side. Park. Rainbow Warrior Volleyball on Spectrum Sports is sponsored by Bank of Hawaii and Kaiser Permanente. Well, it's been an offensive shootout so far. There you see a young lady enjoying the food at the stand share of center. Smile, Alyssa. Wave to the camera. Good job. Here comes Rado Parapunov. Way up by three. Down the line the serve goes to Ininga. Back to Ensing cross court. Gets it down. Long Beach State siding out at 75%, Chris. But Hawaii siding out at 84%. Yeah, that's a really high percentage. Long Beach State leaning a lot on Ensing and DeFalco. Al and we're trying to not lean on them too much tonight, but those two have been getting over 60% of the, the balls tonight. Good pass, Parapuna, and he goes wide and misses back-to-back -back points for Long Beach State after the timeout. TJ DeFalco, who averages about three and a half kills per set, has already got seven, double his normal productivity. So they've been leaning on him a lot. Anderson out of middle fart, Denmark, serves it over. Good pass up to Worsley, he goes on the left side. Stein off the double block, one hand saved by Ensign. Over to DeFalco. There's always a special celebration when you can somehow manage to block last year's National Player of the Year. You could, heck, he could be National Player of the Year again this year. I think the odds are in its favor. He's that good. So Stein will try to get the serve over. Does better than that. Forces a bad pass. Bumped up near the net. The to call his second and final timeout of this opening set. Hawaii leads by three. Prior to these last two blocks, the Falcons hitting 875. Seven kills, no errors, and eight tries. Finally, Hawaii got a chance to uh, load up on him a couple times. But what have you seen from Hawaii in this opening set that maybe surprises you? But let's first find out what Ryan Clay Suji has to say. Ryan? Hey, thanks, Scott. Well, both of these coaching staffs very involved in their team in terms of talking to them about their blocking. They feel like that is going to be the difference maker. For the Long Beach State sideline, their head coach, Alan Knight, talking to them about trying to find ways to slow down Hawaii's pin attackers and really putting an emphasis on their wing blockers. For Hawaii, Charlie Wade talking about their hand positioning of Hawaii's own blockers, saying, we need your hands to be big and wide. Don't worry about trying to touch the ball. It's emphasis at the top point. Worry about getting your hands over the net. Uh, coaching staff all for Long Beach State talking to their setter, to Aninga, about where he's going to go coming out of this timeout. Back over to you guys. All right, thanks a lot, Ryan. Let's take a look at the series record sponsored by Aston Hotels and Resorts. There you see last night's epic five-setter. Long Beach State leading the all-time series 44-41. They have went out one five in a row in the series. So Long Beach State has been doing pretty well against Hawaii. Maybe tonight's the night that UH gets back in the win column. At stake for Hawaii, 
the number two seed in next week's Big West Conference Tournament. If they win, that's where they'll be. If not, they will be the fourth. That's because UCI and CSUN won earlier tonight. And how about the way Joe Worsley has played so far this evening for Hawaii? He's had a magical year. The way he's been setting has been amazing. Setting Hawaii to only a, a 350 percentage. He goes back. He goes in front quick to Goldrick. He's been blocking well up the net. That's been the biggest surprise, I think. I'm not surprised about his creativity in offense. I've been very surprised about his ability to not get tooled too often. And instead, getting a lot of blocks at the net. That was a great serve by Von Tilbert. Bumped up near the net. And elbow save, another block. That is the trifecta. Three straight blocks of DJ DeFalco. I doubt if that's happened in his collegiate career ever. Three blockers up. They were just camped out waiting for him. And it's set point Rainbow Warriors wearing their retro unis tonight. Stein serves it into the net. You never really can quite exhale until the set's out. Right. You know, if you're going to miss the serve, you're going to miss it short like that. It better be one you're trying to get inside the three meter line. If you're going to jump serve, miss it long where the other team has to make a decision on whether to take it or not. And Flynn Ninga now will serve it up the center. Serves it in to the net. And on the serve is there of Hawaii. Takes the opening set over number one Long Beach State by the score of 25 to 21. Hawaii leads one set to none here on senior night in Manoa. Rainbow Warrior Volleyball on Spectrum Sports is sponsored by Strong and Hawaii Honda Dealers. On that first set, Hawaii picked up a big, or put up a big block led by Patrick Gaspin. Hawaii with five total team blocks, four by the big guy. Patrick Gaspin just improved so much since his uh, freshman year when he had the skateboard accident. And had to sit around most of the year, but wow, he's turned into quite the specimen. Lost a lot of weight, jumping better, physically stronger, loves serving, loves playing the back row. Of course, he loves his four blocks he's gotten so far now, but you know what? Joe Worsley's right behind him. Worsley's got three. Hey, Worsley can jump. People don't realize yeah. he may only be six feet, but he can really sky. All right, let's take a look now at the jack back, which tonight, which tonight is... Flirting with perfection, Long Beach State is attempting to become only the second school ever and first team since 84 to have an undefeated season. Of course, UCLA did it three different times in 79, 82, and 84. But that's a long time, since 1984, the last time there's been an unbeaten team in men's volleyball. You know, that 79 year was, the, was Coach Kirai's, I think it was his uh, junior year, senior year. He's now coaching the women's national team. So we saw last night where Hawaii got beat pretty soundly in the first set, and then they reversed the fortunes on Long Beach State. How does Hawaii make sure they maintain what they had going in that first set? Well, it's going to be it's going to be tough. I think only the fourth set one loss this season for Long Beach State. That's that's amazing. Hawaii better hope that he didn't awake awaken the sleeping giant exactly or or, or wound, wound the animal that's going to play scared right now that shot dug up by Tui Letta, who's going to hit it over finally Rosemeyer does they go in the middle slapped around thrown up left side Rosemeyer off the block saved by Ensing Molina over for DeFalco off the high hands Tui Letta throws it up Worsley right side Harpunov and a net violation on the beach Yeah, one thing you're going to see a lot more tonight, we've already seen it, is the legs and arms a little bit tired. There's some uh, sloppiness at the net, a lot of uh, net violations so far. I think more tonight than all of last night, just in one set. Well, last night, Stein had 59 swings for Long Beach State. The Falco had 54. Quick set in the middle and knocking it down is Simone Anderson, freshman out of Middle Fort, Denmark. They don't use their middles a whole lot, and that's why I think 
the big for them is such an important offensive weapon. Back set, right side, Rosemeyer blocked. Behind the end line, Stein gets to it. Rado hits it over to Edninga. Back set, right side, pulled off the block nicely by Ensign. Smart set by Twininga there. He looked off the middle blocker from Dobrig, and Dobrig a little late getting out there, and Rado not quite making the adjustment in time. Good shot by Ensign. First lead change of the night, and that serve goes way long. <laughs> Brett Rosemeyer drifts back. Rosie with a kill in the first set. Hawaii won the opening set 25 21. Pops that one over Molina. Good pass to Tuaninga in the middle. And absolutely hammering it down is Nick Motto. Where Motto plays with so much emotion, doesn't he? And it's a good reason why he plays with a lot of emotion. And that is that he's been sitting around waiting for his time. He played Orange Coast College for a couple years. Then he would redshirt it a year. And then all of a sudden he had his chance to play and all of a sudden he got hurt. Had a medical redshirt. Back to back redshirts and now he's healthy and happy. Back said right side, Parra pulled off and waiting for it was Amato. Leading blocker on this Long Beach State team at 1.14 per set. Number 11 blocker in the United States at 1.6 blocks per set. Guadalinga readies the serve. Worsley, quickly in the middle, pushed off the block, one hand saved by Gassman, over on the left side. Von Tilbert dug up overpass, out of bounds, off the hands of the bouncer. Boy, Van Tilbert really led into that one, didn't he? Yeah, the ketchup and mustard, onions, <laughs> relish, the whole thing. A hot dog filled out. Well, he's got to have a little extra motivation with the, with the family in town, right? That's right. The soul break. To Edninga, Amato dug up, popped up by Worsley. And then getting it off the hands of the block was far put up somehow. He may not even know how he did it, but it worked. I think even he would admit there was some luck involved. A nice dig by Rosenmeyer. Keep that rally alive. There's Rado going up and just taking an easy swing. He didn't even hit it hard, but just snuck down inside the block. Sometimes it's better to be lucky, right? That's absolutely right. This pass by Molina. They go to Amato again, trying to dig it up Rosenmeyer, but it goes out of bounds across the way from us. So now you see Long Beach State's passing is kind of stabilized here a bit in the second set. And so they're trying to go to the middle, something Hawaii did early on in set number one. Last night, Amato error free, six kills, no errors, hit 460. Tonight, error free again, three kills, no errors, hitting 600. Worsley in the middle, talk about middles. Dug up, saved by Tuileta, played over by Von Tilburg. They go out of the back row. And the Falco. So many times in transition that Tuaninga loves going to his former high school teammate in the back row quick and so effective. But they win 100 something matches in a row. 104 or in a row at Beach High School. Amazing. The Falco behind the service line, Rosa Meyer. Worsley, a little tight to the net, and it is a block by Long Beach State. That's set not where Joe Worsley wanted it. I don't think Stein wanted it there either. It's tight, it's inside, it's got three blockers that he's facing. Joe's got to give his, uh, his hitters are used to getting only one blocker up, not three. Taking a bit off again to Falco, backs it right side. Rado blocked, saved by Tuileta. Worsley goes back over to Rado. Nice dig by Tuaninga. DeFalco out of the back row, and he gets the kill. And I think Charlie Wade's gonna call a timeout, and he will. Hawaii won the opening set 25-21, but trail here in the second. Let's check out the first one, Bank top three. It is Big West Diggs, and there you see Larry Tuileta, number two at 2.29.
David Parker out of Irvine leading the conference. So Larry Tweet Tweet Letta in his final match at home as a Rainbow Warrior. And the serve gets over. Worsley goes back set on the right side. Tarapunov hits it out. And it's a 9-4 lead for number one Long Beach State. 5-0 scoring run. Now for the beach. Yeah, Ralph took a good swing there. Just hit a little bit too high, but I like the fact he was trying to go high hands there. Falco again kind of floats it over. One hand set and mistiming it is the attack by Gassman and Hawaii. Not looking as crisp as they did in that first set. And now DeFalco really picking on the Stein of Van Tilburg on the left, kind of serve right at him. It will be a float or a jumper. That time he cranks it into the net. And Hawaii fans say thank you very much. Arapunov, the high flip and the rip. Molina shanks a chase down to Aninga, gets to it, and Hoos hits it. Left side, Von Tilburg gets it over, cross court, the triple block. Kind of did a roll shot cross court over the triple block. That was a great shot by Stein. He had three blockers up, so he knew the cross court angle was open, and he just niftily Puts it right in there. Tough ball to get defensively. They're all waiting for Stein to bring the heat. Back on their heels a little bit. Tom well, Tilburg now with five kills on 15 swings. Hitting 200. <laughs> nice round of applause for the youngster doing a little floor work here. He's got to be one of the smallest ones we've ever seen here. The six serving 10. Rado will try again. There he is. <laughs> Nice serve. To a Ninga goes quickly in the middle. Mono blocked by Gasman Molina on the right side for Ensing. Ensing gets it off the block and then down. Special UH club for the Keiki. Stopped by Papa John's Pizza. Join the UH Kids Club to purchase a large pizza. The kids receive an official club t shirt and a host of other benefits. Join the UH Kids Club today. Ensing off to a good start. Six kills, only one error in 465. Nice numbers for the big guy. And Rosemeyer mishandles the float serve by Amato, who doesn't get very many aces. In fact, that's only his third service ace of the season. That's because he jumped floats, and a lot of teams just step up on the three-meter line, wise up pretty far as well, and they take the ball at their hands. Well, the beach have doubled up Hawaii so far. And the dunk works for Worsley. Each team pulling out all the stops offensively that they possibly can. It's not going to be a ho-hum night. Set the pin, set the pin, set the pin. They're going to go middle. They're going to set it out of the back row. Set the D-ball. And you see a lot of bicks from Long Beach State to T.J. DeFalco. They go on the left. Crossword off the hands of three level. Diving save, Parpunov. Free ball for the beach. Here comes Ensing off the hands of Rosemeyer. Thrown up towards the... Art. Some great digging in the back row, and then Worsley to Gassman to finish it. That took some incredible timing. Hawaii trying to chip away at this deficit, down by four. Stein serve gets over to Aninga in the middle. And is he rude? He is by Gassman. He stuck the freshman Anderson. That's the fifth block already for Patrick Gassman in tonight's match. Emily Maglio and Clay Greeley there cheering on the boys. <laughs> Twininga. And this time, but getting it over is DeFalco. They go back in the middle, and Gassman slaps it down. At one time, Hawaii was down by six. Now, it's two. Okay. 
so yep. hard to come back and rally score and get long runs. Long Beach State had a really good long run. Hawaii is now matching it. Well, they've kind of steadied themselves here in the second set. That's another good serve at that. It will be an ace off the hands of Ensign. Five in a row for Hawaii. Now only down by a point. I bet you can count on one hand the number of times Long Beach State has had a run of six on them this year. Yeah, I bet you're right. 12 11 each in the second. Here at the Stan Sheriff Center on senior night, there's Patrick Gaspin. He's only a sophomore, thank goodness, but four kills, five blocks already. And there's Larry Tui Tui Letta, one of the two seniors that will be honored at the end of the match. Hoy on a 5-0 scoring run after Long Beach State had gone on their own. 5-0 scoring run. Long Beach State uh, look offensively better than Hawaii, hitting 353 in this set. Hawaii only hitting a buck 58. Hawaii's getting it done from behind the service line and blocking at the net. Reninga gets it over to Ensing. Block saved by Hoos. They go back to Ensing. Cross court. There's Parapun off to dig it up. Over to Rosemeyer. Off the high hands. Molina pushes it up. Reninga in the middle. Flipped over. Dug up three letter. Out of the back row. Watch. Down. Shows a little emotion, doesn't it? Oh, As he comes under the net, he just says, screaming at the crowd, and he's yelling, come on, let's go. I don't think the crowd needs to, to get be exhorted to come on. They're pretty fired up. There's his mom and dad, Theo and Brigitte from Amsterdam. Dyne serves it over once again, over on the left, and the cross-court shot ends the 6-0 run by Hawaii. Well, what a great run by the Bows. Hawaii winning the opening set, 25-21. Now, if you're UH, you don't want the 49ers to answer back. That's how Ensign, he who had five service aces a night ago, serves. And he serves it long. No, he serves it in. Got it in that back corner. And that's the first ace for Ensign tonight. And number 26 on the year. Let's see if this is in or out. Oh, it looks pretty good. Looks good to us. Cranks that one down the line. Rosemeyer handles it, though. They give it back to Rosie. And we'll get a net violation call. Yeah, both teams uh, more net violations than usual. There's Tuaninga coming down. He hits it with his chest as it comes down. You see the net shake there. Molina shanks it. Tuaninga throws it up for Ensing, who hits it off the block out of bounds. And how, many saw times, how many times have we seen that in the last two nights? Exactly what I was going to say. Broken play. Tuaninga runs off and saves it. Ensing drills it. It's amazing. He did that at least three or four times last night. And so Long Beach State, the first to reach 15 here in this second set. And you look at the numbers, hitting percentage-wise, these are the top two teams in the Big West Conference. And Hawaii hitting at 288, 286 for Long Beach State. But that's still about 100 points behind Long Beach State's season average. Yeah, Hawaii's off about 90 off theirs. It's, uh, again, kudos to the assistant coaches, Josh Walker and uh, Nick McRae for Long Beach State for drawing up practice uh, or uh, the scouting reports that really are thorough and, and really tell the players where to line up defensively on the block, on the defense in the back row. And uh, I talked to Alan Knight last night. He said, yeah, that they should get the you know, major props for keeping the other team's service um, offensive numbers down. There's so much film in the bank. There's a there's a there's a bank of mm -hmm. film that everybody in the country has access to. When it comes to this time of the year, and Alan Knight said, you know, I've only played really seven guys, so it's pretty easy to get a lot of information on those seven guys and where they tend to hit. And uh, that's what happened last night. It's happening again tonight. Is Long Beach hitting 286, Hawaii hitting 288. Both teams used to hitting well over 300. Long Beach closer to 400.
but you have to give credit to Long Beach State because really the only thing they're playing for tonight is, well, pride, number one, maybe, but yeah. number two, to remain on beat. I mean, they've locked up the number one seed in the Big West Conference. We all know that they're going to go to the NCAA tournament. So this match, in terms of meaning, has much more for Hawaii than it does for Long Beach State. No question about it. It means a lot more to Hawaii. I'll tell you, there's a lot of pride in the beach, though. They, they love their program. They love the history, the tradition. They love their coaching staff. And uh, they're going to do everything they can to beat Hawaii. So it's 15-13, Long Beach State. Ronald Parapunov looking up at the Jumbotron as Bjorn Hoos will serve. That's a rocket thrown up in the air. They're going to call a lift on Solberg. Actually, a double contact on Solberg. Great serve by Hoos. Who offensively has been pretty quiet. Only has one kill and hitting negative, but that makes up for it right there. Back out to a three-point lead for the 49ers. Hoos takes too much off of that one. Sixth service error of the night for Long Beach State. Hawaii's really cleaned up their serve, and they only have four service errors, which means I hope I didn't just botch you Joe Worsley. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Come on, Joe, get it over. Oh, he does. Thank you. To Ininga over on the left side. The topple goes up and puts it right down. TJ is all by himself on the outside that time. That's a hitter's dream. You'll have only one block left. Solberg was committing in the middle on Simone Anderson from Ramato. Matt Butler serves it. Worsley in the middle. And crushes the coconut is Solberg. Haven't heard from him recently. Did quite a bit early in that first set. Solberg picking up kill number five. Chicago Fire. I guess that's because he's from Lindenhurst, Illinois, near Chicago. So Aninga gets it, backs it out of the back row. Ensign dug up Worsley, giving Chase Rosemeyer. He's able to get to it near the fans, and then coming up late and sliding under is Von Tilburg. That was a great effort by Rosemeyer over across the way where the fans are. Didn't think he'd get to that, but then everybody stood around and just watched him. Disappointed Charlie Wayne there. There's no very poor communication that time. That kind of effort, that third ball should have gone over. Please give your defense maybe even, a chance. Maybe even attacked, but at the very least, put over with two hands. 18-15, 49ers. Flaminga. Giletta, Worsley in the middle. Solberg gets it off the hands. Off the hands of Ensign. Mercy James on Ostiatis come in and serve. Saw him in the last night out of Huntington Beach. We played at Huntington Beach High School with Tuininga and the Falco. Goes cross court with the serve to go in the middle and just knocking it down. Hamato out of Alyssa Miguel, California. Tuininga showing that he will set the middle when the ball is passed off the net. That ball was about the eight or nine foot line. Worsley's famous for the further the ball gets off the net. He loves to fire it up to the middle, no matter where it is. Joe's a gambler. He is. And he, I don't know if he's 21 yet or not, but when he is, he should probably go to Las Vegas. He might have some luck. <laughs> I think it's great that he told us the story one time in the corner that his middle name is Montana because his father was a, he still is a diehard 49er fan. So his name is Joe Montana Worsley. And then Gage was named after some horror movie, but they had thought about naming him Dwight Clark Worsley or Jerry Rice Worsley. <laughs> but the mom decided to go with the name of Gage from the horror movie, I guess they were watching one evening. You know the Worsleys are? Roger on the left, Christine on the right. They're in a volleyball club in Northern California. Very successful one. I'm sure 
they're happy that not only get a vacation to Hawaii, but they're going to see both boys play at the same time. It was funny. I'm like, I'm like Guy Enriquez from the Big Guy, who's got all four of his boys playing on four different, four different schools. Teams, that's they're right. all over the place. Well, earlier when the, the team had gotten in the locker room to go pick up their, their uniforms and they're walking back, Gabe was carrying a bunch of stuff, and I said, well, what's going on? And Joe said, oh, he's the younger brother. He's got to carry my stuff. <laughs> and Gabe said, yeah, I don't, I don't have a problem. I'll, I'll carry Joe's stuff for him. Someday somebody will carry mine. <laughs> but they're very tight. So some discussion at the scorer's table, and now Dixon Chun's going to walk across the way to Kevin Cole, the team captain. We have the team captain for the 49ers, and they're all going to stand over there and figure out what's going on. That's not what's going on. That's actually coming to stop. Distracted, okay. Oh, she's just trying to get it. Yeah, she's trying to walk behind on this. Gotcha. It might take a few, sorry about that, guys. Okay, thanks. Well, we caught the tail end of that one, so I'm not quite sure what the discussion was about. It's not been a rotation issue. Typically, that's what you think it is, right? Yeah, it's usually a Somebody. rotation. The wrong person went back to serve. But it's certainly taking quite some time. Some of the fans chanting, hurry up. So it sounds like they didn't catch a sub, apparently, that being the scorer's table. So I guess the scorer's table is going to take responsibility for it, I guess, and not penalize the teams. This is a much longer delay than you would think would be needed. So let's go over to our own Ryan Clay, Suji. Ryan? Well, nowadays with volleyball, back in the day, they didn't use computers to track rotations, but now they do. And so what happened is uh, the score signal actually may have missed one of the rotations or the substitutions, I should say, for Hawaii and inputting that into the computer. And so now they're having to go back and make sure that they rectify that error that they made and make sure they make that substitution. They're having Hawaii actually line up so they can match what Hawaii's rotation is on the court as well as what they have both on paper as well as what they have on the computer. So they're just trying to get everything figure it out and make sure moving forward they have everybody in the right position back over to you guys well that just confirms what i always tell my daughters that the computer is not always right <laughs> there you go <laughs> i bet they didn't have this problem as much when it was done manually right the computers do make things uh, a lot quicker no no, no it, it, it lineup issues and substitution issues <laughs> have gone on forever forever well, it looks like they got things straightened out, and we'll resume action after that brief respite. 1916, Beach lead Hawaii. UH taking the opening stands at 25-21. Lafaco will serve. Tweedletta, Worsley in the middle. It's blocked on the attack by Gassman. They'll go on the left side. Bubontu Berg, and the block lands on the Hawaii side. Triple block. That was the beach. That was tough. Long Beach knew exactly where that ball was going to be set, and they got three blockers up. Tough for Stein to come through on that one. So let's take a look again at that triple block by Long Beach State. They were waiting. They were ready. Look at those hands way over the net. And no chance for Von Tilburg. Good penetration. I think Stein, if he were to have that one over again, he would have gone, somehow gone over or gone, at least hit high hands, or maybe wiped it off the outside blocker's hands. I think he had a couple of other choices that, that uh, he could have made. Well, this match ends a long day of University of Hawaii sports action on campus, and there you see the rainbow wahine in water polo. Big win over UCSB, 11 to four. The softball team also playing UCSB on the mainland. Hawaii dropping a doubleheader, eight nothing in the first game, and then six to five in the second. They'll take on Cal State Fullerton next weekend. And the beach volleyball team extends their winning streak to 25 matches, 5-0 over Boise State. And they do the same thing to Arizona State. And there you see 
some Rainbow Wahine volleyball players. Baseball, Hawaii wins the continuation of the game from last night, 5-4, but really get taken to the woodshed in the nightcap, 9-2, and they'll play the finale at 105 at Les Murakami Stadium tomorrow. And don't forget, talking about beach volleyball, we'll have senior night for you live right here on Spectrum Sports tomorrow at 7 o'clock. We'll have the first and second flights to Hawaii taking on Boise State, but you can head out a bit earlier, beginning at 2 o'clock at the Sand Courts here on campus. Why we'll take on Arizona State at 2, Boise at 4, and then at 7 right here on Spectrum Sports, the final two flights. So, a lot of things going on. Yep. And while we have a second, uh, you know, 2 3 letters coach, Charlie Jenkins, uh -huh. is facing some uh, health challenges, so I'd like to give a shout out to him, one of Hawaii's greats. Coach Tui for seven national championships, I believe. He was with, with Potoma. And uh, I know that Tui would like to wish him his best as well. The block of Parapunov. Yes, we all wish our best. The block overpass. Molina there to dig it. Out of the back row with the left hand. And the Falco somehow with the left hand in midair gets it to fall in. TJ's pretty. Pretty versatile, pretty athletic, obviously ambidextrous. Right. <laughs> I heard he was going to swim home after the match tonight. He didn't even need the plane. Close that one over. Again to Rado. Again, block. And we're seeing something similar to last night where one set was dominated, the first set dominated in one team, the second dominated by the other. Hawaii winning the opening set 25-21, but the beach pulling away here in the second. Once again, Nick Amato leading the way. Fourth block of the night. And that time, down the line, Stein gets the kill. Will we be in for another five set match tonight? Never know. Hope you paid your, put your, your meter, meter in the, money in the meter for parking. Yeah, I might have to go out during the intermission and refill it. <laughs> Here comes Gage Worsley. Cranks that serve. Molina passes it to Tui Ninga on the left side with the left hand. Hoos, he's blocked, saved by a model. Back again to Hoos, blocked again, but there's the Falco. They go quick middle, flipped over, dug up by Worsley. Joust of the net, and Joe Worsley wins the battle with the right hand. Worsley seems to win these jousts more often than not. Mostly because I think he gets the last push in. Got good timing as well. Yeah. Good serve. From his knees to a ning of the end sink. Palm saved by Rosenmeyer. Stein reaches up, pounds it. Gassman looking for an assist on Joe Worsley. And Gassman gives the assist to Worsley. Alan Knight pushed him to set by Gassman. Felt like it was a double contact. Could have been. It could have been, as Long Beach State wants to call a timeout. But the middle blocker giving the assist to the setter. And I'll tell you, Worsley, when he turns around and hits, he looks like a, a hitter. And that was so awesome. That was so cool. Why don't we make that our Fujitsu air conditioning cool play? Gassman, under it, under it, pops it up. And Joe with great vision. And usually it's the other way around. It's Worsley to Gassman, this time Gassman to Worsley. Worsley and Joe couldn't be happier. Setters love to get attacked. Of course, Worsley with the crush of the coconut kill over to Ryan. Thanks, Scott. Well, we talked earlier about how we're hearing very similar coaching styles on both sides. The first set, both coaches talking about blocking. 
coming into the match as we continue to progress, not both coaches talking to them, uh, their teams, about just their overall posture. Head coach Charlie Wade telling his team, we need to relax, make sure we breathe before we serve, don't get so caught up, play, take, take one play at the so time. On the Long Beach State sideline, we're hearing the exact same things. The, their head coaching staff telling them to really live in the moment, not get too high, not let their emotions dictate the way they play. Back over to you guys. All right, thanks a lot, Ryan. Boy, hitting 286 to this point of the match, 316 for Long Beach State. Falco leads the 49ers with 11 kills, and with seven kills for Hoy, it's Von Tilber. So Hoy making it interesting here in the second set, only down by three. Three left are leading all diggers with six. So both teams back out on the floor. Gage Worsley will serve for Hawaii as the fans begin the rhythmic clapping in the arena. Good serve to Ninga. Out of the back row, flipped over and off the hands of Gaspin by the Falco. And then Gaspin immediately put the hands of his own hands up to his mouth because he knew he was that close. Yeah. TJ DeFalco coming through again, stopping Hawaii's run. TJ now with 12 kills, three years in 474. Big numbers, big numbers by TJ tonight. Ethan Siegfried. Serving. Clips the tape, gets over. Rosemar bumps it up to Worsley. Backs it right side for Stein. Boy, what a flick by Joe Worsley to the back side. Gives Stein a little gap there. Middle blocker late getting out. And just the confidence Joe has in himself to do something like that. In the middle, off the hands of the block, saved by Rosenmeyer. Worsley will have to just and hit over the head, I believe, of Anderson, and then Hawaii gets the point. That was a little bizarre, wasn't it? Did he use his head? He did, it was a head cover. Check this out again. There's the yes. chalice, there's the head. Hey, good for him, he's, he's from Denmark. He learned how to do that when he was a young kid, probably. He must, Feet and head. He must think we're in YPO right now. From Molina, three straight great passes. And Hoos goes cross court, yeah. You're right, great passing in the back row by the libero. And he, learned, and he learned from a good one. Andrew Sato, All-American last year from Long Beach State who's now at the University of Nebraska, was a Cal in the fall at the University of Nebraska, right now for the second semester and for next year. Set point, Ensing with the serve. On the right side. And somehow no lift call, we'll continue on. Back again to Stein, down the line, dug up by Molina. And that'll be it. As Austin Matautia checks in. And we've seen him this year go on some scoring runs. Was it against BYU when he, BYU. Had, he had 10 aces that night? Was that when he had 10? Yep. He cranks that one. Good pass. Ensign, cross court. Does it land in? It does. And so Long Beach State evens things up as they take set number two, 25 to 22. We're tied at a set apiece. Coming up, it's the corner crew for intermission. So are the statistics. Well, at least they were even. <laughs> They're gone now. Anyway, yeah, things are pretty even for uh, for both sides. I think Hawaii's out digging Long Beach, I think, in, in blocks. There, there are six sets, six blocks apiece, and uh, hitting percentages are about the same. I think um, this next this next set is going to tell a lot about how the rest of the night's going to go. I really think whichever team gets off to a hot start and can win the third set uh, could take momentum the rest of the night. I talked to Charlie just a couple of minutes ago after they came out of the locker room. Two things he said to me. He said, number one, he told the guys, 
Use the energy of the crowd. These people want to see you guys play well. And number two, he said, we just have to serve tougher. I'm telling my guys, just go back there and rip it. Why, with only four service errors in the first two sets. Set number three underway with an ace. Good start for the beach as Bjorn Hoos picks up the ace for Long Beach State. That is their fifth of the night. They had eight an evening ago. Speaking of ripping it, Bjorn Hoos did just that. Right between Van Tilburg and Rosenmeyer. Hoos will do it again. Rosemeyer, good pass up to Worsley. Out of the back row, it's Von Tauber. And he gets the kill off the Vincent in the back row. I think you're going to see your All-Americans hitting more balls, too. Go All-Americans like Stein Van Tilburg. You're going to see TJ DeFalco hit a lot of balls. Ensign will hit a lot of balls. Worsley does rip that one up to Tuininga. Off the block, saved by... Von Tilburg throwing up for Parapoon off, and they will get a net violation call on Long Beach State. That's about what, three you've seen tonight called on the beach, I believe? Uh, that is exactly five. Has it been five? Last night they had only two. That goes down as a blocking error, and here comes Joe Worsley. Nice jump serve. Good pass up to Tweed. Nigga goes in the middle, and knuckling it down to his left is Nick Amato. And Amato continues his errorless ways. He's not got five kills and no errors. And the night before, he also had no errors, six kills, no errors, and 13 tries. He's living the dream right now. He's waited a long time for a night like this, trust me. And he floats that one into the net. He's a chink in the armor of Superman. Well, last night, they were tied at a set apiece, and Long Beach State won that pivotal third set and went on and won that three-hour, 13-minute marathon in five. It's always interesting to see how the teams come out after that 10-minute break. Rosie cranks that one. High pass up to Tui Ninga on the left, and just using his right hand to kind of just tool it off par with Gunoff is DeFalco. He's got so many different types of shots. Well, first of all, he jumps so well. He can hang and kind of see what's open. And second of all, he's got great peripheral vision. He can see out of the side of you know, his, uh, his head and see all like 180 degrees about where to go. I think you might see 360 degrees. It could be. <laughs> so service error helps for what he's caused. Back and forth we go here in the early coins of this third set. A win by Hawaii. This is the number two seed. If they don't, they're the four seed next weekend. This match also has pretty important implications in terms of if they can get in as an at-large if they don't win the Big West tournament. Set on the left side. Blocked by Parapunov. But they go back to Ensign. No, they go in the middle. And put down by Simon and or Simone Anderson. I mean, in, on the MPSF side tonight, USC beat Pepperdine, which big, really helps the Hawaii cause. Pretty big upset. Yeah, that's what uh, Pepperdine would have been an at-large candidate. I mm -hmm. think that pretty much wiped out their chances. So 4-4, four, four, set number three. Smallest floor wiper in the Big West. But you notice when we put the camera on him, he had a pretty good shaka there, he did. pretty big shaka. He did. Well, he gets the job done, and Rado was about eight feet taller than him. <laughs> so give me a little skin, brother. <laughs> there you go. The Falco went on a couple of good scoring runs in that second set. Let's see if Hawaii can squash him here. Float serve. Worsley, back set, right side. Far up, Yes. Parapunov taking advantage of his size there. He's 6'9". Boos is 6'1". I think Rado just went OTT over the top. And Rado gets rewarded by serving. Twininga chases, access the right side. That shot goes out of bounds on the hit by Edsing. A rare error from Ensign. Only his second hitting error of the night. 
Uh, he's had 21 swings. Dorado again. The Bulgarian. So good to see Rado coming back around. Had a pretty rough stretch for a while in the midseason. Worsley saves it, overpasses it. Molina up to Tuininga out of the back row. Who else? Killed by TJ DeFalco. Amazing. I'd say 90% of the transition plays tonight have been a back row quick to TJ DeFalco. But when he lifts off from behind that three meter line, he gets so high, he can check out the landscape. He can see everything so well as that serve goes long. Boy still up 7-5. Bowes won the opener 25-21. Long Beach State the second 25-22. And a float serve, kind of a roll shot that turns into an ace. For Stein von Tilburg, nobody was expecting that one. So that's a hard ball to hit. You gotta disguise it like you're gonna bring heat and then at the last second you're pulling the trigger and hitting a slow roller. Stein with his third ace. Puts a lot of heat on that one, but the whistle blew. I'm not sure why. They're going to call a football? No? A redo? The referee thought he saw a football. I thought it was a football. Did you? The lines person did not call it, but the head referee uh, briefly called it, and then he... Well, can he, he overrule well, the lines judge? Absolutely. He could have called it and overruled the lines person easily. Molina, what a passer. Yep, and putting it down is Nick Amato. And Molina and Tuileta, two of the best liberals in the country, for sure. So Ensing, who has an ace tonight, has six in the series. The jump serve that one. Rosemeyer handles it nicely. Back over to Rado, cross court, dug up by Ensing. Flipped over the triple block, pancake save, punched over by Stein. We continue on, and then going up with the right hand and putting it down to his right as Amato. Nice job by Hawaii just to keep that one off the Terraflex. Well, that was some pretty alert defense, quick hands. Tui Letta getting the job done to get it started. I think Gassman was the second one to catch her Worsley. Dan's chat, let's go Bose. Long run for Worsley. He's able to get it. The tack dug up in the back row. Ensign is going to be blocked on the broken play by who else? No. They'll say the block landed out. Gassman thought it was in. They're looking over to Charlie Wade to grab the green card. And I think Charlie's going to do just that. Well, Gassman immediately thought that was a block and started celebrating. So now Dixon Chun will walk over, take a look at the monitor. You know, the head referee, Kevin Cole, was right there on top of it. I'm surprised he... Uh, he's showing us whether it's in or out here. Let's take a look. There's the block. There's the ball going down. Ooh, Ooh, that's yeah. in. Looks like it's in. It looks like it caught the line. It certainly looks in from that angle. That angle, you're not really going to be able to tell this anything. This angle is tough to see, but yeah, it looks like it's hitting the. It still looks in from there. Yeah. That's, I think it's two for two there. Yeah, that's definitely in. And you can even see when the ball's bouncing back up the shadow yeah. of where the ball landed. Yeah. And I think there's no question about this one. Dixon Chun should be able to rule on this easily. Well, Gasman's like, I want to get another block. Dixon trying to continue to look just to be sure. I'm not sure why he's looking. There it is, if that ball's in. And he should say that it is a block. 
As he blows the whistle, yes. Yeah, Patrick Gaston, the happiest guy in the arena. Because, you know, you don't want to go back to the bench after you tell your coach to challenge something and be wrong, right? Exactly. <laughs> Gaston was pumping the right hand, going, I told you so. And that makes it a 9-7 Hawaii lead instead of a tied ball game. That could be a big point later on in this pivotal third set. And so Gassman will go back to serve. Solberg in the front row with Rosa Meyer and Worsley. Nice serve. He's having a match. Patrick Gassman. He's putting up some good numbers to be sure. Gas with his six block, first ace, five kills, hitting 400. And don't that's a good nice work. Don't forget the assist. Oh, that's right, the assist to Worsley. <laughs> Can't forget that one. No way. That might have been his proudest moment. Good be. Jaron Hus, who started this set behind the service line with an ace, goes way back behind the end line. Goes cross court, and that one will land in. So kind of the curveball serve by Hus. Great serve by Hus. Yeah, he, he can tell that Tuilet has taken an awful lot of court. They're trying to squeeze Stein Van Tilburg and Rosenmeyer, not have them take quite as much passing area. And Tui paid the price there. Oh, and high. Worsley gets it. Harpunov attacks it off the triple ball. Bravo now with nine on the ninth. Unfortunately for Rado, he's also got a bunch of errors. Rado's got five errors on the night. Hitting only 200. He wants to be up around that 300 mark if possible. And that's where he was last night. Twininga on the left side. They blocked the Falco, but it's kept alive. They'll go back to TJ. Goes cut cross court and gets it in. That was all world. <laughs> Trust me. Not easy to do. He didn't even challenge the block. He says, okay, you're going to go up there. I'm just going to go a little sweet little cut shot. Wrist away. Inside. Lands on like the two-foot line. Crazy. The beach volleyball players are going, hey, not too shabby. Float serve, Rosa Meyer, Worsley back to Rosie, cross court, and out of bounds off the big attempt. <laughs> Rosa Meyer hit negative last night. He's hitting three, make that four, 29 now after that kill. Deuce lead for UH. Serve goes long. And somebody has, uh, Rosie struggled with last night a little bit. I believe he had five service errors last night. He also had a couple of good runs too, so he mixed it, mixed in some good stuff with those five errors. So Josh Tuiningo, who's had a couple of service errors tonight, serves it, gets over off the tape. That's going to be an overpass. Reached up and eventually. Hits the Terraflex after the Falco puts it down with the right hand. And the 49ers have tied it up at 12. Fifth tie of this third set. Such a pivotal set when you head into it tied at a set apiece. Let me go again. Thanks that one. Sweet Aletta. Where's it goes to get it? Back over to Rado. Rado cross court. Is there a touch? No touch. He misses. And Long Beach State takes the lead. And that was a touch them all. Touch them all. I like Dustin Demeter's home run, run today for Hawaii. It's still traveling. Second lead change now. Good he can do damage behind that service line. Good pass up to Worsley. Goes left side. Von Tilburg. Rat attacks and falls under the net. It looked like defensively, Long Beach State got a little miscommunication. Nobody really jumped up with Stein. Uh, they jumped up too early. They thought it was going to go in the middle, it looks like. 
Well, Dolberg got set so often so early that the Long Beach Middles are really paying a lot of attention to him. He hit for big numbers last night as well, so that's how Stein got the one on zero. Von Howell in the surf does a good job. Kept alive, freed over Hawaii with the chance. One hand set, reached over, pushed over, dug up, and then unable to do anything with was Anderson. He turned around, looked, and the ball was landing right in front of him. Goofy play, but Hawaii gets the point. Long Beach State got Rosemeyer off the hook there. Rosie had an easy free ball pass, and he basically overpassed it. Mm -hmm. So Kao out of the island of Maui. Another good serve. Left side. Ensing blocked, but out of bounds. He hits it so hard. You better be blocking it straight down. If you block it any other way, it's going to be out of bounds. But what Hawaii's doing tonight is they're really challenging the outside hitters of Long Beach State. They're making them work for every single point. And DeFalco, who's had a number of different types of serves, floats that one. Worsley looks over, gives it in the middle again. No problem. And Hawaii, the first to reach 15 here in set number three. Welcome back inside the Stan Sheriff Center. Nice crowd on hand here for senior night. We've got the official numbers tickets issued 5,966 in-house. A thousand more than last night, 4,832. Taking in another exciting matchup between Hawaii and number one Long Beach State. Hawaii has not beaten a number one ranked team since they knocked off UCLA on February 5th, 2016. So it's been a little over two years. Hawaii like to try to do that tonight as Gage Worsley goes back to serve for Hawaii. They had four Aloha ball points in set number five last night and just could not close it out. They had three set points in set three last night as well. Left side, who's cross court, misses everything. And I think that Hawaii block now is it's having certain effects on the attacking of the outside hitters. And I'll tell you, both teams playing better offense in this third set. Long Beach hitting over 400, Hawaii hitting 636. That's a pretty nice number. Last night, both teams struggling to hit 300. That serve by Worsley just goes long. Go back to a one-point set. Ethan Siegfried, the designated serving specialist who had three aces last night. Back behind the line now, the Punahou graduate. Former All-Stater, three-time state champion. Now got back row by Siegfried. They go out of the back row and there's the Falco. You know, whenever he digs in the back row, I notice that Twininga will usually reward him by giving him that big set. He made the dig there, and he comes up. He jumps from, like, the 11-foot line, lands on the center line. That's a long jump. Yeah. He's got some hops, to say the least. Siegfried again ready to serve. Cranks it over. Rosemeyer handles it, and turning around, dumping it is Worsley, but Long Beach State ready for it. And then attacking and down is Hoos, but got to give the credit to Tuid Ninga, who dug that up on the two-hand dump by Worsley. And Long Beach State has retaken the lead on a 3-0 scoring run. They lead it 17-16 in set three. Back at the Sheriff Center, there you see the numbers so far in this regular season finale. Number one, Long Beach State. Number six, Hawaii. Long Beach State trying to remain unbeaten. Hawaii trying to get a second seed, which would be a bye at the Big West Tournament, which is held at the Pyramid in Long Beach. Next year, it'll be right here at the Sheriff Center. The serve goes out of bounds by Siegfried after the timeout. He had another good serving run, though. 
Brought the team from a deficit to being ahead. Gets the high fives all around as he goes down the bench. He's done a good job off the bench for them both nights. He's a great little outside hitter as well. Von Tilburg pops that one over. One on one, cross court dug up by Tweed, let him bumped up by Gasman. Rosemar goes down the line. Tuaninga will dig it over on the right side. Ensign cut cross court and then dug up but flies out of bounds off on Tilburg. Hawaii does not want to be staring at a 2 1 set deficit after this one. The fans agree. Ensign readies himself back behind the service line, up by a point. Cranks that one long. Well, the serving has helped a little bit. That being the serving of Long Beach State for Hawaii. We need to see Hawaii now get on a bit of a serving run themselves as Austin Maltautia. If anybody can do it, it's Austin. Yep, will come in and serve off the bench. Did not play in last night's match. And Charlie Wade said, we will use him tonight. And he says, I want him to go back there and hit it as hard as he can. Left side. Oof. Goes up and crushes that one cross court. How about Molina's pass again? He's playing that center back position and just putting up dimes so that Tuaninga can set four players. It's, he's really, Molina's just playing some great volleyball. Andrew Sato taught him well. Yes, he did. So Boos with a couple of aces already. Just kind of rolls that one over. Worsley for Von Tilburg, who is going to be blocked. And then Amato with a little word back to Stein after that block. He and DeFalco in on the stump. And the beach up by a pair now. There have been some great wars between these two throughout the years. And there's no love loss. Somehow Hoos gets to serve over outside. Rosemont, nice dig in the back row, punched over. There's Gage up to Joe in the middle, flipped over by Sobert. Ran it around, around, bumped up for DeFalco, who hits it off the triple block. Once again, it's TJ DeFalco at the end of these long rallies, who seems to get the job done for Long Beach State. Just like he did, especially in set five last night, but now he's trying to, I think, crank it up a little bit more now. You see how many balls he's hit tonight. He's hit 27 balls, 18 kills, hitting 556. It's a huge number. Normally, he hits around 400. And, and last night, he didn't have one of his better matches. Hit 259, did have 22 kills. So, you know, he was probably aware of that and says, I, I have to up my game in the second night because the second night is always more difficult than the first, or typically it can be. Oh, of course, winning the first set, 25-21, but Long Beach State came back when the second set, 25-22. So Hawaii down by three, but we've seen this scenario throughout this weekend series. Three points doesn't really mean a whole lot. If you're Charlie Wade, what are some of the instructions that you're telling your team? Well, first thing I do is he's got to side out right away, get the ball to someone who can guarantee put it away. Uh, it would probably be somebody like Stein Van Tilburg. He's had the most success, but uh, uh, you know he's got 11 kills to lead the team. But uh, Rado struggled a little bit more. He's been blocked more often. He's got six errors out of the, out of Hawaii's 12 errors total. So maybe it's going to come out of one of the middles. He hasn't gone to the middle in a while. Worsley hasn't gone to Solbrick or Gaspin for that much lately. So on a good pass, well, I think watch for it to go to one of the middles. We'll talk about passing. You have to give credit. Long Beach State has been passing the serves of Hawaii very well. That's been the difference so far. I think they're winning the serve pass game right now. Solberg's up front. It's funny you mention that because every time you ask a coach, what's the key tonight? Serve and pass. Right? Pretty simple. At least it seems like it. Yeah, I, I think right now Charlie's got to look at this. is not a strong rotation for Hawaii. Rosemar on the left, Silver in the middle, Worsley on the right, and no back row attack other than Stein. Ben Silver hitting out of back right, hitting the D ball. Joe throws it up left side for Rosenmeyer, and he gets the kill. A much needed side out for Hawaii. That was a huge side out. 
And now Rado, Rado comes back in. All of a sudden now the front row becomes a little stronger. And this time Van Tilburg again hitting out of the back row. I don't know if he hit the pipe. Yeah, he'll hit the pipe. Worsley concentrating. Serves it to Aninga. Right side, push crossbar, dug up by Tui Leda. It's going to be overpass. There's the Falco to save it. They'll go back over to TJ with the left hand tip shot. Dug up by Worsley. Tui Leda. Parapunov blocked. There's Rosenmeyer. Worsley. Middle. It's over. Yes. Uh, it's been a while since Dalton Sorberg's gotten the ball. Chris, you realize he was hungry. The last two plays now was exactly what you said. He didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> Need to sign out, then you go to the middle. That's exactly what happened. Well, there you see Dalton Solberg, who had a career high 12 kills last night, has seven so far tonight, hitting an even 500. And really, when you look at these two teams, I think they're pretty evenly matched, at least from what we've seen so far this weekend. And it's really just a, a battle of wills at this point. They really are. They're, they're very evenly matched. and. It's a, it's a battle of wits, it's a battle of will, heart, courage, perseverance, resilience. What happens when things don't go your way? How do you respond? So uh, what's really fun for me to watch a, a match like this is watching how all of those things are coming into play this weekend. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's true championship type play going on. When you talk to the Hawaii players, though, they don't put any undue pressure on themselves because they say, we still control our own destiny. Because if we win the Big West Conference Tournament, we're in. As you take a look at the standings, Long Beach State, the number one, UCSD, the number six. And if Hawaii falters, they will be the fourth because they would lose a tiebreaker to CSUN, which beat them twice. If they win, they would be the second, even though they'd have the same record as UCI, because they win the tiebreaker on points with the Anteaters. Santa Barbara's got the fifth seed. That UC Irvine series seems so long ago. The battle for the crate. Yeah. Remember that? The, the you oranges and pineapples. If you were to ask Hawaii right now, would you take a win tonight and get the guaranteed second seed? Or do you want to gamble and take the chance you'll have to play Long Beach State in the semis and have to beat Long Beach in Long Beach in order to get to the NC2As? Ooh, I think they'd take winning tonight. I, I would hope so. So Worsley again will serve out of the break. Nice serve. They go over to the Falco who gets it off the hands of the block of Harpunov. You know, what's fun about watching TJ DeFalco play is that he just doesn't hit hard all the time. He's got so many speeds. That one there I think was about half speed. You know, but he, it was in the right spot. You know he reminds me of the way he does it. It's Kostas Theoharides. Kostas was that same kind of a player where he would have all kind of different attacks and different shots and not always trying to just hammer the ball. The long service error by Richard helps. So of course, this one, a tight one, as most of the sets have been in this weekend series. Rosemeyer, important to get it over. He does in the middle. The block. The block, but a net violation on Hawaii. Got up in the net. Oh, there's no Nick question. Solberg. Yeah, Nick yeah. Solberg is the one who got caught up in the net. No question about that one. To Ininga, who's been hot and cold behind the service line. Cross, brings that one over behind the three meter line. Rose Worsley gets it to Von Tilburg off the double block and out of bounds. Well, last night sets three, four, and five went extra points. And we have yet to see it tonight. Maybe this will be the set. <laughs> it, it might. Long Beach winning set three last night, 26-24. That's not a good serve by Solberg. 
And the Beach now a point away from taking a 2-1 advantage. Now walking back is DeFalco, who has not had an ace in this weekend series. So he leads the team in that category with 43. Let's see what he pulls out right here. One hand set, the attack, elbows saved by Gasman. Bumped over to Von Tilbert. Rado Parapuna, great reaction. Well, Rado does a great bump set cross court. Stein was ready for it, had two blockers up, but Stein delivered. That was a difficult play for Rado, very no, difficult. That, that was terrific. Rado down the line. That was a back row to Falco, dug up by Rado, thrown out the left side. Stein pushes it off the block, but We'll get a net violation on Von Tilburg, and that's how set number three will come to a conclusion. Long Beach State wins it 25-23, and the number one ranked team in the country leads it now two sets to one. We'll be back with the serve start set number four. Let's check out how it works presented by Central Pacific Bank. Let's check out Rado Parapunov on the right side here. He makes an incredible play in the middle of this rally. He thinks he's going to hit the ball. Instead, all of a sudden, he's got to bump set it and give an assist to Stein Van Tilburg. You know, Rado does not set the ball very often. He even shows off a little bit. Hey, watch how I did this, you guys. I bumped it up there perfectly, and I got the assist. You know, Worsley and Tui left to have about 99% of the assists on the team. So on any given night, maybe one other guy will get an assist. And tonight was Rado's night. He was quick, alert, he was ready, had good form, and Stein loved him for it. So how about Rado getting an assist tonight? Gassman with an assist. Yep. It is senior night. It's everybody's giving out. By the way, after three sets, the hitting percentages are monstrous. Long Beach State hitting 382. Guess what their season average coming into tonight is? 396. 382. Oh, was it 382? <laughs> yeah, so they're hitting. Oh, that's right, because it came down from, yeah, last, from night. last night. So they're hitting exactly at their season average. Hawaii hitting at 326, which is still pretty good. Their season average is 347. But really, DeFalco has been the story. 19 kills hitting 533. Mamani, Mamani Namahoy. Hope we get a chance to see him. He is a junior, but this is his final year. He'll be graduating and moving back to the Big Island. So here it is. Great, great interview in the, in the pregame. Wasn't that awesome in Hawaiian? Yeah, I talked in Hawaiian, and uh, if you didn't get the chance to see it, hopefully you'll get a chance to watch it on the, on the replay. But uh, great piece by Ryan Suji, and it was done. the whole piece was done almost entirely in Hawaiian. Romani, pretty special guy. He wants to grow the game on the Big Island. I have no question he will. Underway in the fourth and slapped down in the back row by Amato. Now, last night, Hawaii was this, in this exact same position. They were able to win the fourth, 27-25. So they have it. Do they have it in them for a second night to force this to a fifth? You know, we're sitting in almost identical circumstances from last night. You're right. Model floats it over, Rosenmeyer, one hand pop-up by Worsley, but it was not a good pass up to Worsley. And a quick 2-0 lead for the 49ers. So if you're a Hawaii fan, you think it's been tough this weekend. Hawaii ends up facing Long Beach State next week. He'll be at the pyramid and waiting. It was T.J. Falco for Solbrig that time. Hot start for the beach. Great block by T.J. showing that he can do much, much more than just be a great digger in the back row and an attacker in the front. Tuiletta, Worsley, out of the back row. Von Tilber, saved by Tuiletta, uh, Tuininga. Pushed over by the setter, back set. Rosa Meyer was not a good set, but he gets it off the hands of the block for the points. By the way, next week, the Big West Conference Tournament, you can watch it on ESPN3. 
I understand the MPSF. And every team in the conference is in the playoffs. Yeah, that's well, pretty cool. There's only six, right? Yeah. But the top two teams get a bye, so yeah. that's huge. Rosemeyer serves it over. Joust at the net. Von Tilger's two hands better than two and Eagles one. I understand the MPSF. They're streaming their tournament, all pay-per-view via stream. They played their first round today, they play the next two rounds next week. Rosemeyer runs up, serves it into the net. Rosie's third service error this evening. Set to one advantage. Long Beach State, Josh Tuaninga. Looks like he's about ready to bowl the volleyball. Instead, he flips it up, pranks it over. Worsley quickly in the middle. Got a miss hit by Sobrick. Save Molina on the left side for the Falco. And he's blocked. Park it off Sobrick. So big celebration. Hoy knows what they need to do. All business here in this fourth set. Nine blocks now for Hawaii, out blocking Long Beach State, nine to eight. I think Hawaii's blocking has improved from last night. In the middle, off the double block, same back row by Worsley, Rosenmeyer, attacked by Park, somehow overpass. Nice job defensively, 49ers in the middle. Left side. And there's no way on the bump set for NSYNC to negotiate the antenna. Check this out. Hand on the Hawaii side. And he, and he kept, he kept uh, his body on his own side of the net, but he reaches uh, his hand underneath the net, which is legal. Yeah, but how many people can actually do that? <laughs> That's amazing. a difficult play. That's why he's uh, on the national team during the summer. One of the top outside hitters. So we're tied for the first time in the fourth set at four. Service cranked. Oh, dug up by Rosemeyer. Bumped up. Here comes Stein. Off of Tuaninga, giving Chase unable to get to it. It's loose. And Molina, again, almost a perfect pass to start that playoff. Here's three blockers up. And Stein chooses the right location to get yet another kill. Kill number 14. He leads Hawaii, the only player in double digits in the kill category. Falco has 19, Ensign 11 for Long Beach State. Well, that was a good serve to a nigga quickly in the middle. And knuckle to the left and out of bounds by Anderson. Rare error from Anderson. He has 5-14 on the year coming into this weekend series. Each hitting negative 286 early on here in this fourth set. I'm perfectly okay if it goes fast. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's right. You filled uh, your parking meter, didn't you? I did. I went in during the intermission and threw in a couple more quarters. I put an extra quarter in yours just in case. Thank you. But I know they'll never ticket you. <laughs> Another good one on a Saturday night in Manoa. Senior night. TJ DeFalco with the serve. Worsley. Harapuna cross court. Dug up, overpass beyond the end. That was a play where the ball was in so hard that Twinning just threw his arm out. What a ballet like set for Joe Worsley. Twist turns and pops it back. Great back set. And Harapuna just unloads another laser. And now Rado joins Stein. He has 10 kills. Molina, good. Receive. Here's Ensing off the double block. Tuiletta up to Worsley. In the middle. Cross court, but out. Magasta. Those are the players where Hawaii's got to find a way to get that ball in. Once again, how about Molina? 
taking that serve from Rado. That's a great pass. Worsley, left side, Von Tilbert, dug up by Tweedletta. Still kept in the air, overpass and knocking it down. The gas pass. Puts it down like it's nothing, then rubs his fingers through his hair. I was gonna say, Stein with three aces so far tonight, but the service error right there. Why well, still maintains the lead, eight to seven. White out. See the fans in the background, many of them wearing white. Listen. It was a tired looking serve that time by Stein. A little worried about his stamina. 59 swings last night, 31 tonight. It's a lot. So you know, Chris, they're young. They're yeah, he always, yeah, he always <laughs> used to. He fools you. You know, he'll, he'll serve a lazy serve like that and he'll come right back and hammer three or four more at home and go, oh, he looks fresh. And I'm sure his mom has made him the last couple of days some, some great meals that he missed from back home. There you go. Jasmine yeah, takes a bit off of that one. They'll go on the left side. Who's down the line? Close the lone senior in the starting lineup. I thought it was interesting talking to Charlie before the match, and he said, you know, Long Beach State and us, we're going to be battling each other for years for conference titles, possibly for national championships. You look at these two teams, they both only have one senior. That serves us way long. Well, who, start, who started out his freshman year as a libero? He's worked his way up down, starting outside left this year. Pretty amazing. Charlie pointed out, don't forget, we played each other a year ago for the MPSF championship. And now both teams are in the Big West. Good serve by Worsley. The Falco misses down the line. And you talk about Stein being a little bit tired. I would imagine most of the players out there are probably a little fatigued. See who has a little bit more going, a little bit more energy left. Last night, TJ had 54 swings. Tonight, 33. Pushed over. There's Worsley. Net violation as Ensign went underneath the net. And now to make sure he's okay. They haven't called for the full wiper yet. Check this out. He approaches it and doesn't have the greatest approach and comes down awkwardly. Boy, he'll take it up by four. High pass up to Twininga. To Falco cross court. To Falco. That was a bit of an angry swing right there. He thought he didn't think that Ensign went under the net. He was arguing with uh, Nixon Chun. Sorry, right, thank you. Said, uh, okay, just give me the next set. And I'll get the sign out. And he did. <laughs> and he did. The model to float it. So we let a two hands it up to Worsley. Out of the back row, Von Tilburg off the triple block, kept alive by DeFalco. From the right side, Ensing off the block, dug up by Von Tilburg. They go back set, right side. And Rosemeyer absolutely powers it, hammers it off the block. And he's set from Worsley, block moves out nicely, four hands across, and Worsley just got DeFalco's left hand. Glanced it off for the point. Sixth kill for Rosenmeyer. Koninga gets it at the three meter line. Left side to Falco. Does he miss? We'll get a touch on Hawaii. That is the 21st kill for the reigning national player of the year. Two time All American. I'm out to be three-time All-American. And only a junior. 
Same thing with Tuaninga. Yep. In this set currently, Hawaii hitting 286, and Long Beach State still in negative numbers, negative 071. Very unusual. Very unusual. You think they have had a set where they hit negative this year? Four kills, five errors. Wow. I, oh, I doubt they had any negative sets. No, I agree. So Hawaii trying to be the first to reach 15. And I'll tell you, they want the negative set here. Either. No, I agree. <laughs> That's why I pointed it out now. Foul to serve. In for the Nets. That does not make Charlie Wade happy. He says, I've told my guys, if I call you to serve, rip it and get it over. Well, if anything, miss it wrong. Force the other team to decide whether or not it's going to be an in or out ball. But hit it in the net, unless you're rolling a shot, trying to hit something inside the three-meter line. Rosemeyer up to Worsley in the middle. Gaston off Molina. Molina's been so good all night. Frustrated with himself as Hawaii is the first to 15 here in set number four. Well, Chris, that guy stole your thunder. I know when you were younger, you could outdance him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is that dancing, by the way? No, there, there's another dancer. Yeah. This, cr this crowd always has fun. 100% chance they're going to have fun, regardless of how the rainbows do. Well, the folks have been having fun the last two nights. Maybe up to disappointed, obviously, with the loss last evening, but... Tonight, Hawaii looking to try to push it to a fifth again and maybe different fortunes. 15-11 after the break, Hawaii. And serving, Rado. It's shanked, Twininga bumps it up. Hoos with two-handed over, free ball, Hawaii. Worsley, left side, pushed over by Stein. The Falco will set it for Ensing off the double block. Rado, Worsley, left side, Stein off the double block. Hoos. To Aninga, out of the back row, but there's Rado to dig up the shot by DeFalco. Can Stein get the point? No. To Aninga, left side. Boost! And he Oh, what a set! Hawaii had several chances to end that rally themselves, but not with the block. Stein had two chances, but the sets really weren't where he wanted them. The tempo wasn't right. Too tight to the net. So they had to do it the hard way with the block. Gaspin with seven kills now. One of their largest leaders of fourth set. Grotto's trying that down the line serve to area one. I'm not a big fan of it. I like it. If he's going to serve from area five, which is back left, mm -hmm. I love it when he hits that left handed hook shot and just dies at the end to the receiver's left. It's a very difficult ball to pass. Ethan Siegfried. Off the bench, back to serve. That's gonna be an overpass, chance for the beach. Off the block, one hand save, one Tilburg. Tuiletta, back to Stein. Gets it off the triple block and carries out of bounds. Just point to win. They had a free ball there. Again, Ethan Siegfried had a great serve that forced the overpass. That's like getting an ace with Long Beach State. You know, they sign out at such a high rate. Yep. But Hawaii had put up a nice block and a good touch on it. And then Stein came through again as usual. 15th kill. And Stein to serve. They go on the left side. Boost off the double block. Tuiletta cuts in front of Von Tilburg, and I think that's a case where Stein probably had the better, the better angle. You're right, Scott. You know, Tui is so aggressive, so instinctive. He just goes for every ball that he can. And that time just got a little bit too aggressive. Normally, he'll take that ball with two hands. Ensing serves way long. We 
could possibly be going to another fifth set as Austin Matautia will serve for Gaston. Austin out of Moana Lua High School always gets a great round of applause. the sheriff sent a good look at the crowd in attendance for this one in fact they just had the flex cam which is always a lot of fun to see folks seeing themselves on the jumbotron that's one of the things i think fans love most about being here is the interaction between the players and the jumbotron and it's a real event it's more than just coming to a game when you come to the stand sheriff center and he's been worth the price of admission tj defalco this weekend now he leads the team in kills, leads him in digs as well with 10. So Richard has come in for Hoos in the back row for Long Beach State after Mapaltia had the ace before the timeout. He'll try it again. Good pass in the middle, hit down to the right by Amato. Amato continues his perfect night. Ninth kill in 14 tries. Amato. Also has five blocks. Getting 643, and he's got five blocks and two medical, a medical red shirt and a regular red shirt. <laughs> he's done it all. Richard. That may be an overpass. It will be. They go on the left side. The Falco pushes it off the hands of Worsley. And be careful. Never, no lead feels safe. And this is the rotation where Hawaii struggles the most in general. Worsley on the right, with Solberg getting out of the middle, and Rosie getting out of the left. A go on the left side, and Rosemeyer hits it as hard as he can, misses the hands, hits it wide and out of bounds, and you're right. Hawaii's just got to find a way to get out of this rotation. I'd call timeout if I was Charlie Wade right now. He's got two timeouts to use. You can't squander a you know, five-point lead that they had. They go to Parapula. No problem. That's the way to get out of that bad rotation. Prado with his 12th kill. Hawaii first to reach 20 here in the fourth set. They need to win this set to give themselves a chance to win tonight. The Falco. And he just goes OTT, as you say, and places it perfectly in the back corner. When he saw the three-man block, he knew the opening was, oh, wow, it was over. He went over Solberg there. TJ just has so many shots. Every time you've seen all of his shots, he comes up with a new one. <laughs> Here's Carlos Rivera, went to high school in California out of Puerto Rico. So I'm served last night. Rosen Meyer, Worsley in the middle, and so break off the hands of the block of him. By the way, the beach now hitting over zero at zero nine one. There you go. For right. this set. Yeah, for this set. Solberg now has eight kill. He's hitting four hundred. Rosemar took a bit off of that one. They go back to DeFalco. What a save by Molina. Back to TJ. Pushes it down the line. There's Rosenmeyer. Worsley high, left side. Von Tilburg off the block. Kept alive by Richard. Thrown up by Molina. Back to DeFalco. But it's Rosenmeyer. Tuiletta. Stein again off the double block. Here comes the beach. They go back to Ensing. Down the line. And he gets it in. What a round. That had a little bit of everything. Look at Molina.
Cena covering that ball that TJ DeFalco hit. And how about Richard running that ball down? And at the end, there's Ensing all by himself on the outside. Stein was helping in the middle because that's where he thought the ball was going to be set and forgot about Ensing hitting out of the D ball out of the back row. Everybody was scrambling around and Long Beach State wins that long rally. And that's kind of par for the course this weekend. We've, we've seen more than one of those. Yeah. Duendinga misses the serve. Why with a little bit stronger lineup up front now. They got the 6'10 Gasman, 6'9 Rado, and the 6'8 Van Tilburg. That is a wall. Yeah, it is. So brief. Lollipops to serve over. Quickly in the middle, flipped over, dug up by Worsley. Here comes Rado, cross, and it's in. Well, a two points away from going to five for the second night and second time this year. Rado again facing that three-man block, but he found a way to get up and over. Long Beach State with one timeout left. It looks like Allen Knight is not going to use it just yet. I thought, I thought he would use it after that hit. Richard to Tuaninga. Reached up, kind of like a hook shot by Ensign. Thought he was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar for a moment. <laughs> Trying to will Hawaii, and that's what Charlie Wade said. Use the fans to your advantage as the Falco serves it into the men. Set point, Rainbow Warriors. Let's see if Rado coils one right here. He does. Ensign attacks it. Dug up back row by Parapunov. Back to Rado. What a set. And the pancake save for a moment by Rosemeyer, but the block for Long Beach State. Surprised that uh, Joe didn't go back right back to Stein. And Von Tilbert on the left side. A little bit easier set. That set he just did there was really difficult. Well, that had a difficulty rating of uh, 9.5. This is a tough one. Joe the Gambler. Yeah. Worsley had to wipe his hands and throw Simone Anderson out of middle part Denmark. We'll have to get the serve over. Good server, too. Back at the Stan Sheriff Center, and for the second night, we are going to a fifth set. And just to tell you how even these two teams have been this weekend, thanks to Steve Jackson in our truck, he's like a human calculator. In the nine sets that these two have played last night and tonight, Long Beach State has scored 206 points. Hawaii has scored 207 points. Amazing. Amazing. Yes. That's crazy. Crazy. 
And so I'll come down to this fifth set and let's go over to Ryan Kalei Ryan? Well, interesting, after that fourth set, the players for Hawaii kind of gathered together in a huddle. This is separate from the coaches as the coaches met, and they were all pulled together. In the middle of that huddle was senior Mane Namahoy, really encouraging his team. Remember, this is senior night. We have yet to see uh, the junior out of Hilo play yet tonight, but he's already proving to be an integral part of this team as the team once again huddles with the coaches this time. On the Long Beach State sideline, the coaching staff spending a lot of time looking at their lineup, specifically their rotation. They're trying to see if they should change the matchup going up into this fit set, specifically for blocking reasons. Back over to you guys. So the two teams will break their huddle. There you see Hawaii. And there you see Tuila. That's during the break, which Ryan was talking about. Night, Long Beach State won the fifth, 22 to 20. It's senior night. Mamani Namahoy, Tui Tui Leta. They want to go out winners. There's Mamani. And they want to be the number two seed next week to get that by and set up a potential championship match with Long Beach State at the Pyramid a week from tonight. I saw the smiles going on in the huddle. I, you got a feeling that Mamani Namahoy and Tui Tui left and we're saying something like, you know, guys, this is our last night here. Give us, give us a win. Come on, <laughs> all out. Let's get all out here. Let's get after it. It appears Hawaii will serve to begin this so, fifth set. So much luck involved in a 15-point sure. set. A little run here, a little run there. You know, referee's call, a substitution, a hit into the net. Every point just is larger than the next. The fifth is underway. Molina mishandles, bumped up for DeFalco, who hits it into the bottom of the net. Good start, UH. Holy boy, second five-setter of the year, the first last night. And for Long Beach State, this is their third. They've won both of them, obviously. One against UC Irvine at home. And then last night, I did not think there was going to be any way possible that you could top last night's match. I didn't either. But yeah. there's a potential that we can. I, I Well, I think we already have. Both teams hitting for much, much better offense tonight. Long Beach hitting 320, Hawaii hitting 314. Last night, they couldn't even come close to the 300 mark. The defenses were so strong. But a reverse in the result will top it, that's for sure. Swimming a left side, the foul call gets it off a couple of bows. So there have been two sets so far, and both of them to DeFalco. Expect a lot more, and expect Ensign to get a lot more as well. To Reninga. Flips it. Rips it into the net. That's his fifth service error of the night. Long Beach State's 19th service error. Hawaii's got 13. Yeah, last night it was Hawaii with 19 service errors. Long Beach State with six aces tonight. Hawaii with five. Rosemeyer, who struggled with getting his serve over at times, does again. That's his fourth service error. Two. Two, Hawaii, Long Beach State. It's tempting to back off, make sure you get your serve in so you don't give the other team a free point. On the other hand, the serving tough creates points. There's a good serve. Worsley backs it. Harpuna off the chest, saved by Ensing, hit over by DeFalco. UH will try again, the flip over by Solberg. <laughs> How about that chest save by Tua Ninga and Ensing having the wherewithal to be right there to give the Long Beach State offense at least a chance. And then Solberg on the Hawaii side gets the kill, and he has had a great weekend. And Tua Ninga does so many things to help this team, leadership-wise, on and off the court, playing great defense, like you said, then a little chest dig, and his setting is usually 
flawless, next to brilliant, high at volleyball IQ. And he used to play football in high school. Well, he looks like for the first couple of years. He played football and then uh, fell in love with volleyball. His whole family played volleyball. Older brother Gus played volleyball here at the University of Hawaii. And, uh, and, and he uh, decided that when he fell in love with volleyball, he decided to transfer to Huntington Beach High School. And the rest is history. Of course, there. His cousin, Christina Tuaninga, played for the Rainbow Wahine a handful of years ago. The Dalton Solberg who had the kid. in the DNA. It definitely is in the DNA. Molina up to Tuaninga. NC. Cross court. Great swing by NC. Went inside the block and down. So physical. Jumps high. Whip of an arm. Motto floats it. Two handed up to Worsley. Backs it. Harpoon off, off the block, but out of bounds. Set five. If you're just joining us, and no, this is not a rebroadcast of last <laughs> night's volleyball match. This is Saturday night. It's deja vu all over again, as someone once said very famously. Garapunov down the line, Molina. They go on the left side. There's Kuz off the block, off the hands of Tuiletta. Rosa Meyerstein looks at it, hits it, cross court, and gets it to Brian Van Tilburg didn't have many places to go. That's about all, the only shot that he had. And Tuiletta gives him the mega hug. And not only that, he had to trail that ball from behind him to come in front of him and then to swing it. Arpoon off the net, flips. Cross court dug up, Tuiletta bumped up, Gassman, Stein. Off the block, out of bounds. It's 6-3 here in San Cinco. And that will force Long Beach State to call a timeout. The fans enjoy senior night. Hawaii, Long Beach State in the fifth. Well, let's look at the job Stein Von Tilburg has done so far tonight. Only 17 kills, hitting 300. He's also got three aces, and he's got five digs, and he's got a lot of screaming to get the crowd going, and he's got his parents in the house, all the way from Amsterdam. Stein hoping to send the seniors off in a very happy way. Look at the sets. Long Beach State's only lost seven sets. They've lost four already this weekend. The shot dug up by Tulita, punched over by Gasman. We play on, back to NC. Off the hands, saved by DeFalco. They go in the middle, and that one hits the Terraflex. Long Beach State had lost only seven sets all year. In the last two nights, they have lost four, so they have lost half of what they are. Uh, they lost all season. Let's go, Bose. Kyle Ensing. Crosses it, flips the eight, and then leans and falls on the whole east side. Well, that's what happens when you hit it 66 miles an hour. You're going to get more breaks from the cable than not when you hit it that hard. So two points in a row for the 49ers after the timeout called by Long Beach State. And Dixon Chun will call over the young man to wipe up the perspiration. They did the same thing last night. It was an epic five-setter. Three hours and 13 minutes. Long Beach State finally winning it in five. 22-20 Hawaii wants a reversal of fortune here tonight. Ensing into the net. Ensing and TJ DeFalco, they're big bombers, both in the back row right now. 
So if Hawaii is going to score, this is one of the rotations where they have a better chance than most. They've got a serve in. He does. And quickly put down in the middle. Great pass from Molina. Great set from Twininga. Terrific put down by Simone Anderson from Denmark. Quite a catch for Alan Knight. Getting the number two young recruit out of Europe or Denmark, the, the Danish league. Loose into the net. Service errors mounting for the 49ers. And they have reached the eight point mark, so the two teams will switch sides. Hawaii four kills on five swings, no errors so far here in the fifth, hitting 800. Long Beach State, 10 attacks, four kills, one error, hitting 300. So we're gonna flip sides. There's Austin Montaltio coming to serve. I never really understood flipping sides because it's an indoor sport. I can understand out on the beach, but they have always done it. Well, the, the background is different, first of all. When you look into the, 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 the background seats on each side, it is different. Natalia with the serve. Twininga chases it. That one's blocked. Twininga saves it. It'll be bumped up on the left side. The Falco aims and pinpoint accuracy gets it down in the back corner. I told you he'd be getting more sets in this fifth set. I, believe that, I think that's his fourth or fifth swing right there. That one right on the money. Three blockers up, and they couldn't stop it. In the serve, Matt Butler floats it cross court. Back set, right side. Parakuna solo blocked by the Falco. He celebrates. That was a monster block. No wonder he's won. Defensive player of the week for the Big West twice this year. An offensive player of the week twice this year. So floated over again. Tweedleta, Worsley backs it. Parapunov cross court. And he hits it off the nose. Touch called on Long Beach State by the up official Kevin Cole. Well, I think Charlie would have challenged that probably had the up official not called it. The net violation, too, right here by TJ. No, it is clean. I think Alan Knight is going to challenge that, and he will. He's asking his players, did anybody touch him? They said, yeah, we did. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Coach Knight said, okay, well, I'll put, the, I'll put the green card down. Thanks for being honest. Good advice by the players. <laughs> yeah. That challenge could come in handy later on in this set when it's more important. Joe Worsley cranks that one. They go on the back right. Ensing off the block. One hand save on Tilbert. Overpass. Molina will set it for DeFalco. Cross court diving dig. Punch up Rosemeyer. Attack Parapuna. Blocked the cover by Worsley. High on the right side. Parapuna off the high hands. Net by Reason on the 49ers. In violation on Amato. Once again, 49ers more dead violations than usual. Last night they only had two. Tonight, that's their seventh. But they are gonna challenge. So, Dixon Chun will throw on the headset once again here this evening and take a look. Smart for Ellen Knight to use this. It's almost like getting used in a timeout as well. well. I don't know if I saw anything from that angle. It doesn't look like a net violation from here. <laughs> and the net cam had the best view. I'm not sure that's going to show anything different. Watch the knee on the bottom. Oh, oh yes. Oh, yeah, there it is. That's a model's uh, knee yep. that he has that. Yep, there it is. Knee pad on. But it's all. Dixon Chun's like, I was right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I 
That was a big point. It would have been 9-9 if that you. challenge had gone through. Worsley gets that over Molina. Twidninga, the foul off the double block. There's Twidletta. They go back set. Not a good set with the right hand. Harpen off block. Twidletta goes back to Rado. Rado winds up, and that time he is stopped. One too many times for Rado there. He didn't have a chance to back up and get a good approach. I think Twidletta might have been better off side setting to Rosenmeyer on the left. That's a great Long Beach State block right there. One point set lead, Hawaii in the fifth. Serve over. Out of the back row, Von Tilburg, and that one just took off on him. A rare miscue out of the back row for Stein Von Tilburg. And we're tied at 10 as Charlie Wade walks over and calls a timeout. Set five. At 10. Well, there you see the numbers, the scores, and you know, Chris, it's eerie because about at this same time last night, they were tied at 10 in the fifth set. And we thought to ourselves, all right, it's whoever gets to five first, it ended up going 22 20. So who knows what to expect here down the stretch? We we'll let a surf just clears the net. It's a good one, though. Here comes Rosenmeyer and gets it off the hands of the Falco into the antenna. Good swing by Rosie that time. A little bit tight set. The Falco has been known to sham those right back at you with a block solo, but that time Rosie got the best of them. Rosie absolutely has to get this serve over. He does it. Fifth service error. He was trying really hard to get it in, I'll tell you that. It wasn't, wasn't for lack of effort. And so you can say the same thing for TJ DeFalco now. He served it into the net last time. Doesn't this time. Worsley backs it. Harpunov off the double block and down. Now Hawaii needs to score some natural points as Gage Worsley will serve. Well, it's Worsley coming in for Solberg instead of Harpunov in this set. When he comes in for Harpunov, Harpunov's out of the back row, no back row attack. Well, up front you have Stein, Harpunov, and Gassman. Worsley from the left side. Goes cross court with that serve. They go in the middle off the double block. Gage for Karpunov off the triple block. And then coming under the net and a net violation as well on Ensign. State will argue every call that does not go their way. And now they want to challenge. Hey, you might as well use the challenge card because you can't carry them over to the Big West Conference Tournament. And Charlie Wade is like, I don't think you can challenge. Can you challenge that? Is what Charlie's saying? It is obviously offsides is what you Charlie can, was you can complaining about. You can challenge net violations. I think what, what Charlie was is, saying is that... I think you know, it happens on the way down, right there in the back. It's pretty obvious. I think that's... Yeah, no violation, easy call for Dixon, Sean. Charlie was coming over asking, is that their final challenge? Have they used three? And I believe they have. I think Charlie has at least two left, I think. So a timeout will be called by Long Beach State and Hawaii now in a position kind of similar to last night. They're up by two, play to 15. They had four chances to win it last night. They couldn't. And you know these guys, they remember that last night. They have that muscle memory. Yeah. 
Well, you know, uh, it's going to be the hardest two points they probably have to earn all year coming up. Um, and certainly they know for sure that this is no guarantee just because you have a two-point lead in a race to 15 and you're almost there, you're two points away. You've got to play each point as if it's the first point of the set, not the last, and just play hard. All right, let's go over to Ryan Clay, Suji. Ryan. Boy, in this timeout right now, Long Beach State talking primarily to their blockers about what attack Hawaii is going to come at them. They recognize Son, Simon Tilburg as well as Radapar Punap are in the front row, so they're going to play him straight up, meaning their wing blockers are going to stay home, and they're going to have to split the difference with the middle. He's recognizing that this ball could go to either one of those two players. On the Hawaii sideline, Stein von Tilburg really providing to be that emotional leader. He is yelling to his team, one more. We have got to win this one more set, trying to encourage and pull his team to victory. Back over to you guys. Thanks a lot, Ryan. Hawaii with so much to gain with a win here tonight. The number two seed, it also keeps them in the conversation of an at-large team if they don't win the Big West Tournament next week. Exactly. A loss here, they would have to win the Big West Tournament. I think there's no, no question. No, no question. Yeah. The 13-11 Hawaii in the fifth, Gage Worsley. Good blocking front row for Hawaii up front. 6-10, 6-9, 6-8. So they're large at least. Worsley gets to serve over. It is the net when it was Aloha ball. He's got a chance to serve match point again here tonight. This crowd is frenetic. Raucous. Hungry. 5,000 on their feet. Worsley, exact same spot he was in last night. Gage spins the ball, focuses, gets it over. Back set, right side, off the double block, pushed up by Rosemeyer. To Worsley, to Parpuno! for Hawaii to pursue in the, po in the postseason. So much was teetering on this particular night. It was either you're going to have to win tonight, or you know what, the chances for going to the postseason in the NCAAs are not very good. And by winning tonight, they increased in immensely. And there are a lot of happy players out there and a pretty happy coaching staff as well, I'm telling you. That was one great volleyball match. Right now, 18 and 7 overall. Long Beach State, 24 
and one. So Hawaii does it after losing in five last night. They win in five tonight. And Howard Dostoevsky has a very happy Charlie Wade. All right, Scotty, thank you very much. Charlie, you go season without playing five sets. You go two nights in a row. There's your boy. And last night, but how big was this victory tonight? Yeah, it's huge. It's huge for us. And we kind of called it. We thought these both kind of look like they're going to be five sets. You know, but it's huge for lots of reasons, and not the least of which is sending our seniors out. What you're getting ready to witness here, how we send our seniors out, and we absolutely wanted to set them out with the win, you know. I love my team. They're, I mean, they just battle and fight, and this was, uh, it was a great win for us, great win for the state. Couldn't be proud of the guys. Another reason it's huge, obviously, is when you look at the postseason tournament, you are now the number two seed. It would have been number four. This means so many positive things looking forward. Well, yeah, that. I mean, obviously, we get the bye, and then you're on the other half of the bracket from them. And, you know, it's a nice line on the resume if we're not able to win the Big West tournament for getting it at large. You know, we think we're one of the best teams in the country and want a shot at winning the national championship. And you didn't want to let those guys go home with a perfect record. Well, no, and you might even get Allen to admit that he's, you know, not too disappointed to have that loss heading into the playoffs, but we needed it more than they did, period. One final thing before we get into senior night, this crowd tonight, the noise that was in this arena. Unbelievable, unbelievable. That's what I'm saying. We are so blessed to have volleyball be such a big deal and have fans that support us like this. So, you know, I'm just, I'm just so humbled and blessed by the support that we get. I couldn't be more thankful. A lot of happy fans tonight, Charlie. Way to go. Congratulations, buddy. Way to go, Coach. Scotty, Chris, back to you guys. All right, thanks a lot, guys. A horse, Charlie Wade, has to be very happy. And he is, as you see, Hawaii. They have the tiebreaker with UC Irvine, so they'll be the number two seed next Friday. They get a bye day in Long Beach State for the Big West Conference Tournament in Long Beach. Well, what a night, what a weekend, Hawaii and Long Beach State. And that will do it for us. You know, as you look at the brackets here, you'll see there on Thursday, the quarterfinals, Hawaii will take on the winner of UCSD and UC Irvine. And Chris, it's, it's been a lot of fun working with you this weekend. I know we miss Kanoa, but he'll be back of course again we later. Miss him. So uh, that'll do it for us. We'll wrap it up. Don't forget to stick around. The post game show will have complete coverage of senior night. So for Kanoa, for Chris, I'm Scott. Until next time, we bid you aloha. And a good evening from the Stan Sheriff Center in Manoa. This is the post game show on Spectrum Sports. Well, last night, a team fans left disappointed as Hawaii unable with four set points to get the job done. But tonight, on the first opportunity to win it, they do in five. The first blemish mark on Long Beach State and a huge victory for Hawaii as they head off to the postseason. And of course, they do it on senior night. One of the chicken skin moments year after year to begin it. We send it right now to the public address here at the Stanley. Here to present our seniors with their plaques, please welcome, representing the University of Hawaii Federal Credit Union, Barry Carroll, Travis Bow, Devin Hamada, and Ashley Lopes, along with University of Hawaii Athletics Director, David Matlin, and Sport Administrator, Lois Mannon. Volleyball fans at this time would like to recognize our two seniors, both of whom were born and raised in Hawaii, and ending up representing their hometown team that they grew up watching as kids. Our first senior is a product of Waiakea High School on the Big Island, who enjoyed a three-year career with the Rainbow Warriors. He has made six career starts at Libero and appeared in 30 matches as a defensive specialist. His best match was against Ball State in last year's Outbreaker Invitational, where he recorded a career-high 14 digs. He lists his most memorable moment as being a part of last year's NCAA semifinal team. Although only a junior eligibility-wise, he will graduate this spring with a degree in geography and will move back to Hilo to begin his career as a field analyzer. Volleyball fans, show your aloha 
for the six foot defensive specialist from Hilo, Hawaii, number 12, Ma Mane Namahoy. Mamane Namahoy, really you can see the emotion out of him as he embraces with head coach Charlie Wade, really the embodiment of that Aloha spirit, has gone through a lot and has become such a great role model for neighbor island kids who have a dream of playing here at the University of Hawaii. A lot of Hilo contingent here in the house, of course his uh, Namahoy Ohana as well as the Liloy Ohana, another prominent family out of Hilo all here. His coach from Waikia High School in Pilipa, Echo Ozori, his wife Carla is here as he gets on the car and he's kissing the, the Terraflex. You know, Ryan, you mentioned at the beginning of this broadcast, you did the story on him. Hawaiian was his first language, English his second language. He said he was never really good at writing papers or reading books. I think tonight everything is perfectly laid out. He could read this moment and he'll never forget it. Yeah, you know, it is just amazing, uh, his story and, and his ties to his culture, his Olala Hawaii, as he gets his lays from his dad, Max, his mom, Lua Hiva, his sisters as well, also here. Uh, but really, he's so proud of his culture. He's so proud of the fact that he can speak Hawaiian and would like to continue sharing that with the next generation of volleyball players on the Big Island. And that's really, truly all he's spoken about is the Aloha. His feelings, his emotions pouring out on his sleeves right now, his family out on the court. This young man has given it, it his you. all. And even though statistically, like Coach Charlie Wade said earlier, the numbers may not show, but his heart sure does. And you can see that he's going to take that back to the Big Island and grow the game with this family and the aloha that he has shared here for so many people in the islands. Our second senior was a decorated prep athlete at Punahou School, where he was a two-port state player of the year. After spending a year and a half on the mainland, he decided to return to Hawaii to join both the Rainbow Warrior volleyball and football teams. In his first season in Manoa, he was a second-team ABCA All-American and first-team All-Conference selection. He was among the nation's leaders in digs, and this year is no different. His 2.25 digs per set average ranks second in the Big West. And just last week, he tallied a career best 16 digs against UC Santa Barbara. He lists his most memorable moment was being able to play in front of his family and friends. He will graduate next fall with a degree in communication. Volleyball fans, put your hands together for the six foot Dooley Barrow from Honolulu, Oahu, number 14. Larry Tui Tuilata! And what an incredible blessing Tui, Larry Tuileta has been to this program. A gift, coming home, taking a long journey, but he finally made it back and he has contributed to this team in so many more ways than anybody could count. He's calm, he's reassuring, he's a naturally gifted um, Athlete, his parents there, Miley and his dad Larry, both volleyball players, one of eight children, an amazing athlete, um, just super proud of him and just so thankful that he returned home to play here in the islands. Again, referring to the story that you did, Ryan, Charlie Wade talked about how his heart was ripped out when at the last minute on signing day to he donned that USC cap and then the joy that Charlie had when he was going to the movies with his family and he looked down and he got a phone call and he saw it was Tui and he knew he knew he was coming home you know I think a lot of people wanted Tui to come back and and he, of course you see the outpouring of aloha now from his family I think as he mentioned in that story he didn't really recognize what significance he meant to his family to his community until he went away and sometimes it takes that you going away and realizing just how important home is and as you can see here as he continues to be greeted by his family friends and supporters Tui I think above all else is just a humble kid he is one of the 
most hardworking and one of the most humble athletes that you will ever meet. And this may will probably not be the last time we see Tui on a senior night. Uh, he will be going out with the football team after this, and we could see him adorn in lay come next fall. Wouldn't that be something? He's already been out at a couple of the spring man. practices. Uh, of course, everybody who followed his career in high school is a great volleyball player, but also leading the Buffett Blue as part of that. Great stuff. And really, this is what it's all about right here. Just seeing the outpouring of love and aloha from the crowds, from the family. Head coach Shari actually has a few recruits here in the house. I mean, what better way to sell the University of Hawaii than to sell senior night because no other athletic institution in the country sends their seniors off like the University of Hawaii. You know, as a former athlete myself, uh, I go back 40 years, my senior, well, 36 years. It was nothing like what it has evolved into. And I watched this as a broadcaster, as a fan, year after year, and uh, it is chicken skin and something to be proud of. We're going to take a break. We will be back with more from the stand, Sheriff, including hearing from the two seniors in their own words. Welcome back to the post game show on Spectrum Sports. And welcome back, everybody, here at the Stan Sheriff Center. An exciting night as Hawaii beats the number one undefeated team in the land in five sets. Another thriller at the Stan Sheriff Center. We'll be back with some final thoughts about this team and about postseason play that gets underway shortly. But first, the two seniors in their own words. When I came here, I was far enough away where I could grow, but I was close enough where if I wanted to go home and I was missing it, then I could go back home. Hawaii wasn't like my first, like wasn't a choice of mine. It was the choice instead. And then when I actually came here and then I saw the facilities and I saw what, okay, what I can do here, that's when I started falling in love with Hawaii. The year and a half I had to stay away from you know, any sort of competitive play was probably like the hardest. I mean, I haven't really told anyone this, but it's probably the hardest part of my life because, you know, I couldn't practice with the team. Um, you know, I couldn't lift with the team, so everything I did was on my own. I mean, it kind of just taught me, you know, time management and, you know, if I really do want to come back and I really do want to thrive and, you know, contribute to the team somehow, then I have to put in the effort even, you know, when I have no help at all. Coming here, doing, being an athlete, being in school, I really sh I like showed me, like, look, if I want to be a college graduate uh, with a, at least a 3.5 GPA, I gotta, I gotta buckle down on school. Can't just be going out and partying, you know, on the weekends. But so, I, this, this actually gave me that. For the four years, it showed that I could, if I set my mind to certain priorities, I can. No, I was kind of just like feeling my role. I was a libero. I kind of just came in, you know, during the season, and I was kind of just doing whatever the team needed me to do, and kind of took a step back. And we had really good leaders out here. You know, we had Kupono, Jennings, Hendrick, uh, Ian, the seniors, and you know, I guess. This year, I was able to kind of, you know, step up a little bit, be a little more of a vocal leader, and, but at the same time, lead by example, because I don't want to say anything that I'm not doing, you know, so. Well, yeah, I think, you know, athletically, I could, you know, still improve a little more, but because we have a lot more of the season to go for the team, and, you know, as a person, I hope that uh, my teammates, my friends, and my family can come to me and feel like they can talk to me about anything. It's a rainbow war. People look up to you. Both, doesn't matter if you're football or women's volleyball or even basketball, like, they, People notice you even when you, you don't want to be noticed. Being a Rainbow Warrior to me is just, you know, you represent more than just myself, as cheesy as it may sound, but you represent more than yourself, you represent more than your team, you're literally representing the island. And it's crazy how much people follow us. I mean, we just came back from a road trip and people were asking about the road trip. I don't miss the camaraderie. I mean, I will miss my I will miss my teammates. I mean, even sitting right now thinking about it, I'm just like, geez, a couple more weeks and then I don't get to see these guys. I'll miss the competition. Uh, I'll miss like just the facilities itself. I mean, especially the weight room. I mean, I told the guys in the weight room, I'm like, the weight room is where it's at. I mean, if you want to be, if you want to improve, it's where you got to be in. You just got to eat, breathe, sleep, weights. So that's that's what I'll miss the most. I mean, I obviously miss my teammates and I miss my coaches for sure. Um, I mean, it's hard to call them coaches. I mean, we're so close. Uh, you know, I'll miss the fans. 
and I miss seeing my family in the stands, you know, and seeing certain people in the stands, knowing that they're there watching. I would say I was shy, and then as growing, as a growing into myself, I, I became, I was able to, you know, uh, like show who I actually really am. And I feel like I'm a, a better person because of this, of the four years I've been here. Thank you.